right, we're live. The levels of you, all of your gambling addictions is ridiculous. I think I need to refer you all for help. <laughs> or I need to devalue the, the shimmer shilling somehow. I need to, I need to like give crazy, uh, crazy inflation rates, like Zimbabwe inflation rates. Let's make everything cost a million shimmer shillings, and then and then you'll uh, you'll you'll. Although then you'll probably just gamble more because <laughs> it would be the only way you can afford things. Um, happy Thursday, everybody! It uh, feels a bit weird after doing a, a stream last night. Two streams in a row is always a little bit strange. Um, but yeah, um, welcome to the stream. Happy Thursday! Praise be the spiral and all that. I uh, hope you're doing well some uh some good news today so uh let's start with the most important news of the day um the most important news of the day is i finally acquired a playstation 5 um so it should be delivered in the next week uh and i'm just so pleased it's taken me eight months uh, to get one and finally i've got one um which language is this, Mad Flash? This is uh, this is six six five zero two assembly. Although what you can see on the screen right now is the macros, um, so it probably doesn't look very much like assembly. Let me put something on the screen so you can see it while I go into the next piece of news. Uh, let's find something. Well, we're going to work on the player today. Um, I'll tell you more about that in a minute. But we're gonna, what we're going to do? But uh, let's load the player code up. So yeah, that's probably more like what you're used to seeing uh, for assembly language um the second most important piece of news is that the uh dot cosmos game has started uh, arriving at, for people um uh, so i got i got mine today I, I got three copies today so i've got a copy for myself um i've got a copy which i'm going to give to sean who is there so sean you've you've earned uh, uh you've earned one of these so you have to dig your Game Boy Color out now. Um, that's a nice manual. It's really, really nicely. It's it's really well, really, really well made. Um, and the cartridge as well. It's quite hard to see because the green screen will try and cancel it out. But um, it's broken. Well, I'll send you one anyway, and then next time you come down, bring it, bring it with you, and I'll try and fix it for you. Um, and then I've got a third copy, which I'm going to give away on at the end of the month as well. Yeah, you can play it on the Game Boy SP. Yeah, absolutely. Um, third piece of news is Doc got the uh, the Nexus today, so he's he's set up with that now. Uh, I've helped him uh, get that up and running uh, this afternoon, um, so he's going to be playing around with that this weekend, which is going to be a lot of fun uh, to see what he comes up with. Um, what else is there? There's more, I'm sure. Uh, oh, I'm already drinking vodka. That's not really news. Uh, but I started before the stream because I was very thirsty and very, very warm. So I wanted a nice cold drink. Cheers, by the way. Uh, thank you for the host, Prince Faze, as well. Uh, thank you for the host, Andy Magic Knight. And thank you for the host, Prowse Seven, as well. Very much appreciated. Of course, always. Um... What other news is there? I think that's probably about it, actually. Um, I have added uh, five more series of images, uh, background images. Um, some are, some are going to be tricky, I think. Um, but I've, I say this every time and you figure them out. But I've, I've made one with a relatively obscure connection. But it might not be obscure enough. I, I have a feeling once you see two or three of them, you might make the connection. But... Um, We'll, we shall see. Um, but there's five five of these. Actually, there's, there's five series. I think three of the five are tricky. Um, uh, and this this is the one I think is the most difficult. So there you go. Uh, no, you haven't missed the 50K. I'm going to give that out in a second. Yes, yeah, so there you go. There's There's one background. So a new series. So let's see if we can figure that one out. I mean, it doesn't really give you much to start with anyway so uh what is cheers <laughs> you don't know cheers sean oh my god do you know um 
Uh, thanks for the <laughs> thanks for the resub as well, Sean. Uh, do you know Do you know Frazier? You must know Frazier, right? The the guy here, basically. Um, it was the show that came. Frazier was a spin off of Cheers, basically. Um, so Frazier was in Cheers first, uh, which was a, a show about a pub. Um, you can't say you do. Oh, well, they're, they're two comedies you might, might seem like super, super dated to you uh, out of the will then. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, what was Cheers? Cheers was late 80s or mid 80s, mid to late 80s, I'd say. Uh, Frasier was what uh, 90s Frasier was around about the same time as Friends wasn't it more, more or less so um, I think Frasier dated better than uh, than Cheers anyway so uh, if you if I was to rec re recommend you watching one of them I'd say watch uh, watch uh, watch Frasier I think you'll enjoy that um, but if you want to see more of that kind of um, universe if you like um uh isn't two points based in a pub two pints 1982 to 1993 wow it ran longer than i thought i feel like i've heard of frazier but can't say i've seen it yeah yeah so it's kind of right with the right, right with the areas yeah times um yeah Frasier is is really good i need to i need to watch more of more of that i haven't seen it all uh, but the episodes that i've watched every episode i watch is amazing so um i have to watch that right let me add points to you all enough of the uh enough of the uh background chat uh, so add some points to you all and start the races uh, and tell you a little bit about what we're going to do tonight so um, obviously, we're going to do C64 tonight, not Mega 65. Um, so tonight we're going to do Checkanoid, as as we normally do on Thursdays now. Um, and I'm going to do the, the player death routine. Um, it's something that we haven't got in the game yet, and it's going to be important for some of the screens that we can test the death routines properly. So, for instance, on the Robotron screens, um, you need to really get a feel for how difficult they are and you're not going to be able to do that unless you can properly die so i thought we'd get that done and out of the way uh it's probably probably do that in one stream i can't imagine it's going to take longer than than uh, three hours to do this so we'll we'll do that uh tonight uh, and then on the next stream we can start working through screen by screen uh, adding the stuff in um what even is that oh it's deg the slug um but yeah um i'm i'm looking forward to um i'm well the end of this month as i say i'm going to give away dot cosmos so i'm going to give away a copy of this i realize a lot of you have already bought this um but if you know somebody who who wants it you can you know you can always play for it and gift it to gift it to somebody else uh who hasn't got it that's absolutely fine uh so that this will just be a standard giveaway so this will be the um the normal um shimmer shillings buy a ticket get get a draw for it um are we doing that on the same night that we do the will it be signed i can sign it yeah why not i'm gonna sign it on the somewhere i'm not sure where i can sign it I could probably sign it on the inside of the sleeve or something or I don't know, it'll, it'll probably sign quite well on the back but yeah i can i can sign it why not um and I'll be doing that on the same night that I'd give give away the uh, eBay then winner. <laughs> uh, the same the same night I give away the uh, the prize for the um, uh, for the Millfork challenge for this month. Um, the good news is next month we'll definitely be doing. Um... Oh, hang on. Yeah, sorry. I thought I'd got to, I thought I'd got too many uh, boards, but I haven't. Um, next month we'll definitely be doing a double um, Nexus giveaway. Last night's uh, bits were uh, ridiculous to say the least. Um, I pretty much paid for an entire board in, in one night's worth of bits. Um... <laughs> Signing John D. Rock Rockefeller. 
um so it wasn't quite enough to buy one board but with the with the um with the rest of the mum's stuff as well then we should definitely be able to buy two so there'll be a double uh a double giveaway for the next challenge um which i'm kind of pleased for because the next challenge should be a kind of tricky one and a little bit varied to what we've been doing so far um and depending on how well the rest of the month goes and to be honest so far it's going really 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 well um then there may be a pi 400 giveaway as well so next month will be a triple giveaway so two two uh, nexus giveaway two nexus uh, boards and a pi 400 as well so um yeah it's going to be going to be an exciting month or two and this is all down to your um your your you, you lots kind of generosity you've been you've been incredibly generous and and stuff and it's really appreciated it, it really helps to kind of get more and more people involved in the coding and stuff so uh give away something i don't have i don't have one from you give away something i don't have and i'm confused i'm confused um what is next month's challenge yeah it's a coding challenge it's going to be another um optimization challenge so it's going to be another one that we measure in uh, mega cycle bytes or killer cycle bytes i don't not sure what it is going to be so far um i know what the challenge is going to be i need to code it i need to spend a couple of days oh you've won all that stuff from me already yeah that's true but you can always you can always give it away to somebody if you if you want to if you you know um uh, well if it's the mega 65 boards obviously you can't win but the uh the giveaway you can still enter if you want to i'm not going to prevent somebody who's already won um the giveaway from winning again so if you want to enter again you you definitely can that's it's entirely up to you um okay let's uh let's crack on so uh, yeah as i say we're going to do the player death routine tonight no no it's not fair well it's up to you if you if, if you want to if you want to take it you can if you want to enter and, and donate your prize you can do that as well so um it's entirely up to you what you do with it uh the only ones that i'm i'm kind of strict about is the mega 65 boards because i really want to make sure everybody has a fair chance of getting these um so it's really important that the um that the people who've already win it don't um don't win it again otherwise it wouldn't be it wouldn't be fair really to uh, it wouldn't be fair to the the people who um you know are probably not going to come to the top of the list uh every week okay so uh what i did just before was uh load up the original game just to take a look at um how the death routine works so do you set accept ideas for challenges um i let me think how many have we got left actually i don't think we got that many left in terms of code challenges uh i mean if i do accept them the only the only stipulation would be that um well, you see, it would be a bit unfair to exclude somebody just because they came up with a challenge, but um, it kind of gives that person an advantage as well because they kind of have a bit longer to to think about it. Um, let me just check what the schedule is. So uh, there is a code. Yeah, there's another coding challenge in September and probably one in November as well. Um, uh, but there's probably going to be there's probably going to be two things announced in September. So there'll be the optimization challenge and then there'll be a slightly longer challenge as well, I think, uh, which will probably, I'm not sure what it's going to be yet. I need to have some discussions about that with uh, the people involved in, in that, but there, there will be uh, something um, relatively exciting coming up. So, uh, So uh, regarding the challenges, I mean, if you want to offer a challenge, uh, you can do, but there is a there is a chance. I need to think about how, depending on the challenge, there may be a chance that um, I have to kind of somehow penalize the person that's um, that's come up with a challenge. Because if you come up with an optimization challenge, right, the the optimization will will improve over time. So if you spend long enough looking at a piece of code, if you spend a year looking at the spiral challenge you'd have probably come up with something that that came into first place right it's just the speed that people can do this at so 
if you have an optimization challenge like that and everybody gets three to four weeks, but you've, you've given it to me now and I launch it in September, you will have had four times longer than everybody else. So I would have to come up with um, either a, a, a kind of um, a, a penalty system just to kind of reduce your score a little bit based on that, or you would have just have to accept that you couldn't enter it or something. So... Um, I mean, if if you if you want to risk the fact that you may not be be able to enter, then then yes, then by all means send me one. But I I would I would say probably not. Um, however, saying that, if you have already entered and won uh, a Mega sixty five, so if you've entered a game competition or you've entered a, a, an optimization competition and you do have an idea, then by all means send it to me because you can't win anyway. So. Um, in that case, by all means, send me send me your idea. Oh, come lame second! You didn't come lame second. You were you you and Carl were way ahead of everybody else. Um, but if you want to be pedantic about it, you came third because I came second. <laughs> That was the wrong window. That's the window. There we go. Hey, Codiogo. I cheated. Hey, I I took I took existing code and went, oh, that's a good idea, and then just did it better. Oh, oh, that's not a background. That's not a series one. Are you just trying to find one just by chancing upon them now? Okay, so we're looking at the death routine here. So, okay, so what happens when? Well, first of all, one thing I notice is that the particles move probably twice as quick as they actually are doing uh, at the moment. So the the exhaust particles, oh, which actually bugged out then. Look, no exhaust particles until I move. That's interesting. That's a bug. So if you move quickly in both directions, the particles stop moving. Yeah. Yeah, I added I added uh, about 49 more, I think, today. Uh, something like that, yeah. So that's one thing I want to do. I want to try and speed the particles up because they're a bit slow in the uh, in our version. And then I want to do this. So watch what happens if I die. Huge, huge particle explosion. Now, obviously, the the particle explosion is going to be nothing like that. Um, we can't we can't draw that many particles. But what we can do is we can override. See how the laser turns off? We can override everything else on this screen for the death routine. Um, and and just allow so there's no there's no exhaust particles anymore, there's no bullets being drawn on the screen anymore, there's no laser on this screen or stuff on the on other screens. In fact, let's see if we can go to another screen. Um, actually, no, it's not going to work, is it? Because I can't I can't just turn the swarm off, unfortunately. Um, I'm just going to turn the laser on up here. The, the, screen over here anyway so on this screen i can't get through here anyway yet so i was i was going to see if these disappear when you hit them um but probably not actually um but these let's get hit by one of these okay oh and you drop your power up as well so that's the other thing we need to do is we need to drop some power ups. So uh, let's let's take a look at that then. So let's start with the uh, the exhaust particles. Let's try and speed them up a bit. So they are down here, exhaust, uh, and here is our um, delta x, delta y. Okay, so I just let's play a fine x. Oops, I'm still using WASD to try and move up the uh, the, the list, which is not going to work. So we kind of need to double uh, this this particle effect here. Um, 
I'm just trying to see if there's anything else in here, which no. Okay. So there doesn't seem to be anything that would cause problems if I doubled it, but this can be a negative value as well. So I need to figure out where that's been, been written to and calculated. All right. Okay. It's, it's done in here. So if I was to put two in here, uh, actually this is going to be one, two, one, so yeah, let's do two in there and, and D in here and let's just see how that looks. They are breading. <laughs> you mean like fish fingers? Okay, that's a little bit better, a little bit faster. I think they need to drop down a bit faster though now. Uh thank you very much for the uh for the resub hot wheel flash. Uh thank you very much, very much appreciated. Uh <laughs> I don't think you're gonna get I don't think you're gonna guess any of these. I think you're gonna need I think you're going to need a couple of them to automatically be shown before you can um, automatically, like, uh, unlocked, randomly unlocked before you, you will uh, be able to figure out a connection. Okay, so I'm just going to make the particles drop a little bit faster. They're just a little bit too slow at dropping at the moment. Uh, so this is picking a random number. Storing it in the X fraction, don't care about that. Storing it in the Y fraction. Uh, okay, do care about this one. So and in it is going to create a kind of low value. Uh, so And they're always going to drop. So I'm just going to double this value. So ASL. So the way I remember this is because double has the letter L in it. Um, and half, the L sounds like an R. So half and uh, double. So in double, the L sounds like an L. In half, the, the L sounds like an R. So that's how I remember those two. Of course, you can just visualize the, uh, the, the, the numbers as well in binary, and that will do the same job. But uh, my problem is, is that I struggle with left and right as well. So even when I visualize them, I still get them wrong. So ah, that must be, yeah, Thalamus. Hello, Thalamus. Welcome. Oh, God. Have I pressed the wrong... Uh, what am I pressing here? I keep pressing the wrong button. Oh, because I'm on the wrong file. That's why. There we go. It's still not fall. I want it to fall a bit faster than it is doing. Okay, let's double it again then. Because it's a Y fractional and this, yeah, all right, let's, do, let's double it again. It's a small thing, but I really do want to, um, hear the Steve Rollins bass line. Yeah, I, I, that's what I always hear. I hear the bass line and I think, oh, that's the Steve Rollins bass line. And then the next connection is that style of his, um, Although someone tricked me the other day by playing uh, by playing one, and I, I I assumed you were there, but you weren't, and I was sad. I was. I was. Okay, that's a bit better. They're they're dropping a bit faster now. There we go, and it is moving a bit faster. So that that was one thing I noticed when I when I put this version on that they're moving very very fast indeed in here. Obviously, I can't make them move this fast because that would mean having many more in the stream, and I can't add that many to the stream. So, oh, good guess, good guess indeed. Not part of a series, but good guess. <laughs> No, you did put the numbers as well. Yeah. Oh, I should have made that. I should have made that one, shouldn't I? Yeah. 
Uh, okay, so uh, we're not going to be able to do that with the particles. That's too much. But uh, this is definitely better than it was before. The particles are a little bit quicker. Um, and they move down correctly now. So, Okay, so what I want to do then is now make it so we can die. So let's find somewhere where we could die. And we'll start on that screen. Um, so I think the best place is probably going to be something like this this screen or the one above it actually let's start the one above because then we can move into any of three death screens basically two death screens so this is screen 12 oh, so i need to open the game loop for this it's the game loop that's the initial map position there we go One could have been we could have a series based on the Dharma stations. Feel free to to create that. If you do come up with any ideas for series, um, just don't don't tell anybody else. Either make the series yourself, or if you really if you really think it's a good series, um, but you don't have the time or, or the, the the skills. Not that it takes much skill at all to gather a few JPEGs together. Um, just send me a send me a private message and I, I will I will make them and add them when I have time. I don't always have time. I had time to add about fifty images today. So, um, but yeah, if you come up with a series, by all means, uh, make make them yourself. Um, the resolution is not as important as the um, as the aspect ratio. Uh, thank you, Doctor X Y Z, for the follow. Thank you, uh, Thyrapt, for the um, follow as well. Cheers. So yeah, if you just make them um, all JPEGs with .jpg, not .jpeg, they need to be .jpg. Um, make them roughly that size that uh, SP said. There is an exact size. I can't remember what it is. Uh, Steps can probably tell you. He knows. Um, which is the exact size of that window that they, they display in. But if the aspect ratio is the same, then, then they'll be fine. Uh, and just make them all lowercase, uh, the file names. And the the file name is is the name you search for. So if your if your thing is London bus, uh, then you would have London bus with no spaces in it, uh, all lowercase, and that would be that would be what people type to get that image. So, um, uh, I couldn't I couldn't I can't remember the exact size, but yeah, around about that size is is fine. SP uh, fourteen forty by nine hundred I think is about right, yeah. But steps will can tell you the exact value if he, if he's if he's there. I don't know if he's there though actually. Um Okay, uh so that's the right screen now. So hopefully this should start us on BT London Boss. Yeah, well that was just an example. <laughs> um also if the words if the if the name starts with the or a um you know like uh the London Eye, uh, then just call it London Eye because the the algorithm will take the the out of it anyway. So, so people can still search for the London Eye, but they will get London Eye. So just the word the or the word ah uh, can be removed from the beginning, just the beginning. Uh, Papa Demos, thank you for the um or pa Papa Demos. I'm going to call you Papa Demos because that sounds very C64. Um, thank you for the uh, for the subscription. Welcome to the stream. Oh, the vodka's extra tasty tonight. I like it. Um, okay, uh, what was doing? Oh yeah, let's compile this quickly, and then we'll go. What we're going to do? Um, I've already got one place where I know a Papa Demos and pliers. <laughs> oh wow, that's an early nineties reference. I like that. <laughs> See, there's a good, there's a good series. Uh, pop singers with the names of tools or pop groups that contain the names of tools. <laughs> Can't be many of them. Yeah, aging me as well, uh, as well. <laughs> Papa Demos and Pliers, I like it. It was, it was uh, Shakademus, wasn't it? Shakademus and Pliers. Okay, so when we hit these, they should, yeah, so they should flash the border white. So that means we're, we're being hit at this point. So we'll use this as our, our example, and then we can uh, create a, a, a kind of kill player routine. So we'll put the kill player routine in here. We're going to add a flag as well to the player, um, which we'll probably do in the zero page somewhere. Uh, so this is the game loop, so not that. We'll do it in this one here. Um, 
let's have a look do we have i think we have loads of stats up here uh, so we won't put it in zero page it's just a waste so we'll do it here so player uh, is dying Uh, this is just going to be a, a single byte. It's either going to be zero or one. I mean, it could be done in one bit, really, but we're going to use a whole byte to do it. It's fine. Um, by default, that's obviously going to be zero. Um, so we'll do. We'll set that up here with the positions, just after the spawns, actually here. Um, And the reason we need that flag is because we need to know um, which uh, which pieces of kind of animation do we need to run. For instance, if we're dying, then the, we don't want to draw the laser. So the laser will have a check and it says, is the player dying? Then don't draw the laser. Don't bother. Um, the, the particle system will have a thing in which says, is the player dying? Okay, then don't draw the exhaust particles, that sort of thing. I've been sneaking in and out and watching you from time to time. So it's always a treat. Oh, good. I'm glad, glad you enjoy it. Um, DIY bands we can at least lose sparks. 80, 1890s pop groups. <laughs> uh, but yeah, feel feel free to add backgrounds in if, if you if you want to. Uh, as uh, originally I was gonna just allow people to just add um single backgrounds in here and there, but I decided it was probably better to do these series. It kind of gives you a, a kind of little kind of mini game if you like to, to keep you busy when i'm doing the boring stuff so um and I, it also means those who submit the backgrounds can kind of have the enjoyment of watching people try and figure those out as well killer loot solo <laughs> oh man killer loot solo and the harpsichord harpsichord solo Yeah, to be fair, I can't say anything. I, my my favorite band, Nightwish, plays um, mandolins and uh, Ilian pipes and stuff. So, you know, yes, they have electric guitars. Yes, they have keyboard, but they also have a guy who plays a mandolin. For God's sake, um, sounds amazing. But but yeah, he plays a mandolin. He plays a mandolin. He plays the uh, recorder, giant recorder. Uh, I don't know what they call them. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Gnunix tier for the follow. Uh, appreciate it. Um, welcome to the stream. I hope you're doing okay. Uh, a person delivering. <laughs> yeah, he, one of the one of the instruments he plays is a giant recorder. I don't know what it's called. It's probably not called a recorder, but that's essentially what it is. It's just a massive recorder. Uh, it's probably about probably about two two foot long, two or three foot long. It's quite big. Uh, and he plays Ilian pipes as well, which is kind of like bagpipes, but instead of blowing into the into the bag to inflate it, it's kind of like it uses bellows, which are connected to his his arms. Um, it's the same instrument that's used in World of Warcraft in many many of the uh, the musical pieces, um, especially in um, oh crap, what is it called now? Uh, it's uh, one of the one of the zones. I think is it Howling Fjords in in um, in Northrend, uh, use that use that Ilian pipe, um, and it's a very haunting kind of sound. It's a very nice sound, uh, but he plays them a lot as well. It's got a very folksy vibe to to that band. So. Right, okay. So we've got the flag set up. Um, so now we just need to turn that flag on. So we've got um, we've got things that ex explode. I think they're called destroyables, and that's what we called them in here. Uh, and they live in here. Uh, Gentle giant has some. Oh, I'll have to. Uh, I'll have to make a record of that because I do like these. Uh... Oh wow, they're old as well. Uh, at least Nightwish are very recent. I mean, they they just done a um, new album not long ago, so they're not like nineteen seventy four. But I will have a listen. I'll have a listen to those. Okay, Jaguar game. Interesting. Jaguar games are probably the easiest ones to just guess because there aren't many games. So you can just look at a list of screenshots and kind of figure out what they what they are. You could probably fit all the screenshots for for all the games on the Jaguar on one screen quite easily. 
and the chances are it's these screenshots as well. <laughs> okay, so what I'm looking for is a border increment in here. Um, which is not there, so it must be somewhere else. Okay, so let's take a quick look. Uh, okay, so we've got one here, death routine. There we go. Pickups. Okay, so it treats enemy bullets like pickups. Uh, so this is where we actually we hit that hit a bullet. So this is where we'd need to call kill the player. We're already in the player routine. Um, so I'm going to leave the the board. Well, actually, no, I'm not going to. I'm going to take that out. I'm going to call um, jump to subroutine. Uh, kill player now uh, the only other thing i do need to do here is make sure that i res uh, i keep x because uh, i think that's being used y is looked up here so i don't need to keep that but x i definitely do need to keep my my jump back is here you can see here decrease x so what i'm going to do is i'm going to store x in restore rest x there and then i'm going to use self-modifying code uh, to grab that back. And again, as I say, whenever I use self-modifying code, I always write beef. Uh, the immediate mode um, symbol, the hash symbol here, means it's immediate mode. So it won't try and uh, create a 16-bit value here. It will just truncate the the bits that it can't use, which are these these uh, upper nibbles here of this, uh, well, yeah, the, the, the upper byte of this 16-bit uh, this value. So it will just use this. But it just means I can keep the, the kind of consistency of using the word beef. Uh, everywhere for my uh for my self mod code god forbid the day that i actually have something important going on in this area of memory because i'll just be confused okay some zara or something i remember that game i think that was a commodore format um game I'm sure it was I'm sure i seem to remember getting that on one of the power packs um thanks mad beagle for this resub appreciate it cheers okay uh let's get kill player so we've got a spawn player so we'll, we'll find where the kill player is uh or we should have a spawn player anyway oh no we probably don't actually because we don't actually the, the player just appears at the moment um in the initialization function so actually i'm going to do it up here because the init function needs splitting into a a spawn player, uh, which we don't have anything in there yet, but it will contain a lot of this stuff, um, and a kill player. Okay, so kill player, what does kill player need to do? Well, first of all, it needs to set the flag, so we're going to... Uh, actually, we can do this in, in one instruction. We'll just increment the, the value in uh, player is dying. So that's the, the flag incremented. Um, we can then use that flag to turn certain things off. So uh, one of the things we need to turn off is the controls, because obviously if you if you're dying, you can't move around, right? So the controls would stop at that point. Uh, the number of lives you have would decrease by one, um, which I think we should have. Oh, we don't have it in here. It's, it's I don't tell me we don't have a live counter. I think we have lives, but I don't think they do anything yet. Update score. Yeah, they don't. Okay, cool. So we need to decrease the live counter as well. So, so let's put that in here. Uh, actually, where's the player score as well? Is that just on the screen? Score offset, draw score, score. Oh, it's in here. Okay, well, we'll keep it in here as well. Uh, now, the life counter, I believe, uses two digits. No, it uses one. Okay, so that's good. So just do that and what we need to do is we need to store that value in there in the initialization so in the initialization uh, we need to set the initial lives so i think the initial lives is three cool so that's our number of lives so we can we can do some uh tests here as well so one thing i did notice is when you die for the last time so let's go down here so there was a big explosion. When you die for the last time, it cuts straight away to the end. So we can do that straight away here. So what we can say is we can do uh, 
decrease hood dot lives. Actually, uh, does that set the flight? Does decrease set them? I need to check that. I can't remember if decrease sets the negative flag. I think it probably does. It makes sense for it to do so as soon as it sets the zero flag. But you see, this is the problem with doing Z80. I, I doubt myself now. Uh, it does set the negative flag. Okay, good. Particles don't stop on walls. Yeah, no, they don't. Um, the, the, the one thing we've had to do is make some... Um, uh, it does just not carry air. Uh, one thing we've had to do is uh, make some um, compromises because of the way the particle system works in that it is basically um, filling in blank space with uh, special characters, like a, a buffer of, of data. Um, we can't do that when there is background there. So the, uh, wouldn't forget, yeah. Uh, so so the problem is um, we we have to kill the particles when they hit stuff. Otherwise, what we end up with is um, it, it kind of drawing, it trying to draw on top of it, and it would actually just replace it. And it, it just it simply wouldn't work. So, um, or at least it wouldn't work in a way that would be performant. So, so we have to uh, we have to kill that, unfortunately, uh, when when it hits the wall, which is a bit of a shame. But um, it's a minor minor thing. What I've tried to do is keep the feel of the game as close as possible to the original without compromising too much and when i have compromised it, it's usually things that don't really have an effect direct effect on the gameplay um and only a minor effect on on the look and feel of the game um so for instance uh when when the death routine happens in here um the particles bounce off all the walls and stuff now while i could make the particles bounce off things it's not going to add an awful lot so um Surely the death has it. Yeah, death has a massive effect on the gameplay. So like having all those particles, there's not going to be anywhere near that number of particles. Uh, and there's also not, they're not, not going to bounce off everything as well. What they will do is it, it will kind of explode like a firework and, and just disappear when it hits the walls, basically. Um, as for the number of particles, uh, I need to, we need to do some experiments in a minute with that. But I'm hoping we can get the particle count relatively high, um, even if the particles flicker. Um, uh, we will sh we shall see what happens, but I, I think the particle limit's quite low anyway. Um, uh, where is it in my constants? Isn't it? Uh, to do max particles thirty two. Why is it thirty two? Okay, I thought there was more than that. Well, I'll try. I, I might have been messing around with the uh, with the. Uh, Multiplexer, so I'm gonna I'm gonna up it to sixty four and see what happens. Let's give that a quick try. Actually, now I think I can up the. Uh... Oh, it, I think it was because of the music. I had some problems with the the timing of the music, so I had to I had to reduce it a little bit. Okay, it doesn't seem to be having any effect on it anyway. So, I mean, obviously it's down here where it matters when these things explode, but. Yeah, it seems to be seems to be fine. Okay, so sixty four particles is 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 probably going to be enough. Um, okay, let's uh, let's work on this then. Okay, so decrease hood lives. So if that value is uh, actually, we probably don't even need to do anything here either. We can just do that, and then in the game loop. Um, all this happens, and then there's a jump to main loop, which happens down here somewhere, here. So we can do a check here. So we can say load uh, with uh, hood dot lives. Um, We can have the game over here. And basically all I'll do with the game over is I will just reload the, the intro again for now. And then we can change that later. So uh, how would I go about loading the intro? Let me have a look. So in that case, what I need to do is I need to have a look at 
boot file which says load these two so it would be this basically okay so we're going to start with three lives so let's just quickly lose those lives and see if this works and then if that works we can we'll start working on actually doing the death routine itself let's get uh let's get some vodka on the go as well oh, i think you're really struggling with the backgrounds tonight i'm, I'm kind of glad actually because you went through the last like 100 or so backgrounds stupidly fast Okay, so that's probably two lives because there's no reset, it's just removing lives and I've not updated the HUD, so I need to do that in a minute. Oh, shit. The thing is, I've got to not destroy things. About Actually, if I go and sit in the laser, that'll immediately lose all my lives, so that's probably the best way to do this. Oh, no, it won't because the laser actually doesn't hurt me at the moment. So I do need to be on mines. It's only the mines that can hurt me right now, so... The mace is not helping <laughs> the mace is really not helping. Oh, also, I need to fix these as well because these no longer work since since the map update. I need to uh, I need to trigger those properly. Okay, let me turn the mace off. Uh, uh, let's do a, a hood update while we're at it as well. So, uh, So this is going to be pretty easy. We're just going to take this value uh, in here uh, and draw it to the screen. This doesn't even have to be BCD, right? This is just going to be the, the value. Um, so we take the value in lives and we store that at uh, It's that simple, actually. There's not, there's not a lot to this. It's not like we have to draw that entire, entire um, string of di uh, digits out. Um, we just need to do this. Just need to work out where it is on the screen. So I think it's the very last section of the screen. Uh, so I'm going to put it as two six or so. See what happens. Since Salam is <laughs> no, it's just that I haven't uh, because the the. Uh, the character numbers have all changed around and I haven't gone through everything and, and reset them back to, oh, no, I'll tell you what it is actually on, on those, those mines need centering differently. So, um, yeah, so it is a combination of the, they've got different um, character numbers. But I remember when we looked at the character, the, the way it's laid out, it does need to be kind of adjusted so it's um, centered differently. Uh, it's a small thing. It's, it's it's not hugely important right now. We know that the 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 code for it works. It just needs to be um, adjusted to fit properly. So I can't remember exactly what what the layout is. I think they're they're using a four by four layout, and they should be using a three by three layout, uh, something like that. I can't remember the exact exact thing, but it does mean there might need to be some small adjustments to some levels, some screens. Okay, let's go and get hit by these. Oh, damn it. The thing is, is they're so quick that... Also, it's not... I'm not losing lives. Also, they're not triggering. Oh, wait, am I on... Ah, I'm on player... Player dying, I think. Um... Okay. Um... Okay, okay, let's let's put some uh some things into draw stuff so it don't oh, phone keeps going, what's it going on? Oh okay. Uh don't fix them. I have an updated file to see. Yeah, I'm. I'm not going to touch them yet. Um, I. It's it's one one for later. BG Rovers return. Okay. Hey, the only thing I will tell you, you're way off. 
<laughs> You're way off. But that's all I'm telling you. Right, let's get some vodka around the go. Well, this is my favourite vodka now. I didn't think you could have a favourite, but this is this is actually really, really nice. I thought all vodka was made equal, more or less. Apparently not, though. The funky tune, what's this? Oh, eliminator. Okay, uh so let's in the player dying routine in the kill player. I am gonna increment the border just so we can see that that's happening. I'm gonna decrease the lives, then we're gonna run HUD but draw lives, because we need to draw the lives whenever the lives are changed. So we will also do this in the init function. Um, which probably means we need a, a draw score in here as well. Uh, but let's just do that for now. It should be enough. I will play a little bit of uh, Resident Evil as well tonight. I did have a sneak peek at a map. Um, I didn't really look for much. I was just trying to find out where the mansion key was used. And the interesting thing was the mansion key was nowhere to be found on it. Um, but what I did find out was that Mansion key is the generic term for all keys that are um, uh, the ge generic term for all the keys that are like helmet keys, shield key. So I think I just need to examine that mansion key to to find out what kind of key it is. I think that's the the problem there. Uh, being from oh, so yeah, so I'm drinking absolute um, uh, raspberry vodka, which is incredibly nice. Let's see now if I lose a life. Okay, so it is drawing something, but it's drawing it in the wrong place. It's drawing it here, and it's drawing the wrong character. So we need to fix that uh, and move it over here. But I'm also, I'm not dying at all, so let's see if I can die if I... Okay, they're oh shit. They're not going to kill me either because there's no radial explosion from from these. So, oh, damn it! I need to make more things deadly. There's not enough deadly things at the moment. That's the problem. Or I could just give myself one life, couldn't I? That old zero lives. That would be a lot easier than doing what I'm doing right now. Because these aren't triggering either. I don't know why they're not triggering. Oh, there we go. It does load back to the beginning. Okay, so there's some minor issues with it, but um, it's we we have a kind of gameplay loop. So, uh, oh, interesting. So the people who make Perno is is it is Perno Ricard the the people who make Perno, which is like the 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 terrible version of Greek Uzo. Not that Uzo is that great either, though, to be honest. <laughs> really, really don't like that drink. The last thing you want is vomit that tastes that tastes like candy. Um, good night, Quad Soul. Thanks for joining. And let's let's be honest, that's exactly what that stuff makes it taste like. So, um, it also it increases the chances that you are going to vomit because it's horrible. Okay, so draw the lives. So we need to take the lives counter. We do need to add a value to it. The value that we need to add is it doesn't actually say what's what's our what's our add value? What's the oh base number char? That's that. Well, that's the number we need to add anyway. And that needs to be back one. There we go. Right. Uh, let's give myself 
extra life so I can see what, what's going on. Hey, Jamie, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Oh, there we go. There we go. Interesting. Wait. SP. How did you guess that? What the hell? How on earth did you guess that? Do you know what the connection is? If you know what the connection is from one image and you guess that, I will, I will be uh, I will be absolutely shocked. Program set in Boston. Interesting theory. Try it. Try it out. I honestly, I honestly think this is the hardest one, the hardest one to get. Um, and I, I worry, I worry at your ability to work these things out as well. And I, I am starting to think you are somehow connected to my, uh, my code base somehow. <laughs> um, okay, let's go down and test. Oh, actually, it's still drawing three lives up there. Not ah, there. We go. That did give me zero but then the the weird thing is is these ones don't these ones don't trigger for some weird reason until i blow one up and then they trigger hmm. so very 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 odd um Also, there, there's obviously some screen shake stuff, which is destroyed the, the bottom of the screen. So I need to reset some stuff on here. But um, let's let's work through the bugs here. So first of all, it looks like the lives counter is not drawing properly for some weird reason. So when you first come in, um, it sets the lives to one. But I think something else is overriding it. So I think there is a hood in it somewhere, uh, which is, yes, it's here, see. Um, so I think hooding it has to happen before player in it. So that would be in the game loop. So up here, uh, there is a hood in it. Yes. And indeed it happens after player in it. Okay. So that's that. Now let's sort the title screen, uh, shake bug out. So that's basically D011 and D016 that need resetting. Uh, that is in, uh, bootloader title screen. Here we go. So we can just do that in here in the start. So um, is there a D011? There is a D011. It's set here, start game. It's in the start game though, so we won't do that there. Um, so what we'll do is we'll load D011, uh, which is our, I want to say this is our vertical one. I, I always get these two mixed up. I will remember these at some point. Interesting. The the falling sky thing is as as I mean you yeah, I mean I'm I'm shocked by that. I really am. Yeah, D zero one one is the Y scroll. So this needs to be uh ended with uh five like that and then uh ord to just turn the uh the original values, which is uh, 03, I believe, uh, scroll value that is. So the Y scroll is always in the middle uh, to begin with, um, whereas the horizontal scroll is always uh, to one side. So you don't need to do the or, you just need to do the and. So that should fix those. And then we'll see if we can figure out why those um, things aren't, aren't triggering, the mines aren't triggering the second time around. I think SP is hidden in my room somewhere, or he's got access. He's got like remote access to my computer. It's kind of crazy the 
the uh, the accuracy of some of his guesses. Or he's got some like crazy artificial intelligence, yeah, that, that can just go. He just feeds in these images, and then they they it spits out what series I'm I'm uh, thinking of. So, uh, oh shit, I missed that. Didn't have to. So, if I've not been hit, does that mean these ones will now trigger? No, they don't. That's really weird. Why they don't trigger? Even when I go off the screen. So there's a there's some kind of inherent bug here. So um, they also didn't make me lose anything. So uh, so is there any there aren't any more that have those? I don't think I've got any more set up. Um, yeah, I don't have any more set up. There's, ah, there's a laser in here as well. So we need to do another laser on this screen. <clears throat> but it should be a short laser. It's from here down to here, so it's, it should be a little bit shorter, which should be a bit easier. But I think it's probably going to have to be specific for each screen in this case. Um... <laughs> oh, SP, you're a git. <laughs> you are a git. I can't believe you figured this out. You figured it out from one image. One image. You had cheers. And you went, oh... Do you know the thing is as well? Cheers was the first, the first one that I I thought of. Right, I was I thought okay, I'm going to use Cheers, and then I thought oh maybe, uh, maybe I can think of shows that are set in Chicago because I for some reason I thought it was Chicago, um, and then I looked to know it's Boston, so I, I went with that. And the thing is is that I thought I thought that was the easy one to know, and you managed to got to get that yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, I made yeah, you you you've you've guessed it exactly right, which is absolutely crazy if you ask me. Uh, okay, so for some reason we're not triggering things properly. So let's let's go. Let's keep doing this. Let's keep doing it until we figure it out. Oops, why is my phone? My phone keeps going mental. See, that one triggered. But these ones don't seem to trigger. This should trigger a game over. It does. It does a bit of a weird glitch as it goes to the screen, but it does actually jump to the screen. So what I could do there is just, um, in fact, let's do that quickly now so it doesn't do the glitch. Let's get rid of that. Uh, pretty easy to do. Uh, let me have a look. So in player... Kill player. Oh no, it's not in there, is it's in game loop. Okay, so in here. Uh when we load the main title screen before we jump to that, what we'll do is we'll take the value seven B. We'll store it D011. Uh and the reason we do that is because that's an illegal is it D zero one? Yeah, it is D zero one one. That's an illegal uh screen kind of setup. So what this will do is instead of instead of displaying uh a screen, it will just display border. Uh, is effectively turning the screen off immediately, uh, which will prevent us seeing any glitch that happens. I uh, just need to confirm this. I'm pretty sure it's D011. Da, da, da. Yeah, D011. Now, the thing is, is we need to, need to make sure on the title screen that that gets turned on correctly. Uh, and it, it doesn't quite get turned on correctly because we're doing this and... Uh, so we're leaving some of these upper bits as they are. So I think what we can probably do instead is we can just reset this value back to what it should be, uh, which will be 1B. That's the default value for that. Uh, so that will re-enable the screen and show it uh, show it properly. Oh, I can't believe you're getting these. I can't believe you're getting these. <laughs> I tried to find the, the, the dancing baby, but I couldn't find a good good enough picture of it. 
Um, I was hoping, I was really, really hoping when you put fringe in and you put, um, what was the other one you did? Fringe and uh, being human. I was, I was hoping that would throw you off the scent because you discovered it so easily. Uh, but it didn't because you went with Boston freaking legal. The, the the only one with the bloody town with the city in the title. God damn it! Damn it! I, th I thought I was being really really clever with those. I thought I thought there's no way you're going to guess these. All right, so I should get rid of the glitch now. Obviously, this won't jump to title screen. It will jump to a game over. Um, piece but we for now we can use this as as uh, just a game over yeah that's that's the thing yeah <laughs> oh my god you you do you think like i think you think exactly like i think because i i looked at the ones with boston in the um i looked at the ones with boston in the title and i thought i i know a few of these so i looked at a couple of pictures of them, and then i saw one with william shatner i went no nah, that's the one i'm gonna have and you've you've immediately uh you've immediately found me out and yeah okay that didn't seem that seemed to still glitch then let me do that again I wasn't paying attention sorry been a bit slow on this tonight I'm distracted by the uh the thing so yeah so uh and somebody can explain that well actually I'll explain it's easy for me to say it so um you, every whenever the counter uh up here reaches zero it will say ready uh, and at that point you can guess a background uh, so it tells you how many backgrounds there are there's 593 backgrounds the 513 have been discovered so that's 80 more backgrounds um, some of them belong to series like this one uh, so as sp has figured out this series um, is all about tv shows that are set in boston and there are four more to discover in this series according to the yellow text um, yeah, we do need a help, don't we? That's that's probably probably it. Um, otherwise, um... <laughs> steps getting in there with IK plus first, <laughs> throwing a spanner in the works. Um, otherwise, you can just kind of guess. You can also use your channel points to. Um, have the bot randomly pick one that's not been discovered yet which is how people are discovering the series okay that does still glitch towards the end then i'm not sure why i don't think it's actually disabling the screen properly i think that's the problem uh but that should be disabling the screen that's really bizarre why that wouldn't oh i know why because we're loading files in before we disable the screen. So we need to disable the screen and then load the files in. There we go, that'll fix it. Um, and when you guess, if it isn't a screen, it won't change, but um, you, everybody has 15 seconds. When the counter starts ticking down, you have 15 seconds to get all your guesses in. If no one guesses within the 15 seconds of the timer starting to count down, then then it just, uh, that's it. You're locked on the, the original picture and it will just count down, back down to zero again. Um, uh, oh, almost. A th what's that doing there? It looks like that's. Is that Sprite? Maybe that's. Hang on. Uh, so if I put E zero one five zero zero. Yeah, yeah, it's sprites. Okay, so we also need to disable the sprites on the title screen, uh, which is fine. We can do that here. Okay, cool. All right, I'm not going to restart the game now. Let's just go back in. We should just be able to go back in and start where we left off. It should be working pretty good. Everything's reset. Awesome. Um, okay, cool. Let's move down to here. Uh, and have a think about the actual death routine. So at the moment, it's just making the border change color. What we need it to do is if the death routine happens, we need it to clear everything that's going on on the screen at that point. So if we if we come down to, um, 
Actually, can I do it on this screen? I'm not sure. Let's go and have a look. Okay, so if I was to... Oh, shit, I died straight away. Damn it. Oh, yeah, I should probably change that to not say pre-order anymore. It's out, so... Oh, one one small piece of news about that. There is a there is a way to get soft locked in that game, which is uh, a little frustrating that 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 has happened. But um, thankfully, it's not too far into the game, and it's quite an un you 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 have to do something in a quite an unusual order to do it. Uh, but it didn't come up in testing at all, and we played through the game. Oh God, I don't know how many times but we played through it a lot, and I played through it on stream as well. And it never showed up. Um, so it is. It is an. Un and I can see how it's a difficult thing to get to happen. Not a difficult, but an unusual thing to get. It's very easy to make it happen. Um, but you wouldn't in normal gameplay. You wouldn't normally end up in that situation. Um, so it is a little bit frustrating. But um... <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah. What's Okay, everything does carry on exploding, but I'm I'm thinking about the the uh, the bullet trajectories, but they don't really matter because the, the the thing that's important here is that the player is removed and nothing that happens on the screen has any effect on the player. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, turn the is dying um, flag on, which we have got on, and then we're going to go and make sure that that. Um, Actually, here we can do it with the with the kill player. So we'll do our first check. Will be here uh, where we say is uh, is dying. And uh, if that's equal to zero, then we can carry on. If we are already dying, then we can't kill the player, so we need to exit. But there'll be more to it than just this. We need to block movement. We need to stop the sprite from being drawn, um, and then we need to we need to cause the animation to happen as well so i'm also going to set a, a player is dying counter um but what we'll actually do is we'll just use this uh, player is dying value so i think what i'm going to do is is i'm actually going to use the player is dying as a, as a timer uh, basically uh so i'm going to set this to let's say to 80 well let's say to ff and store it here so now what I'm doing is I'm using this value as a, as a counter. Uh, so if the player is dying, this is going to run. This piece of code is going to run um, here. And the job of this is going to be to uh, to count this value down. So, so obviously when this value runs out, then we're no longer we're no longer dying, and and then we can. Um, things can be active again so what we need to do is we need to go and add this into the game loop and we need to make sure that the game loop does does certain things um only if we're we're, we're dying now we could actually do it just by calling um it here uh whoops and having the the condition in here but if you look pretty much everything in this this thing um can be ignored if the player is dying right so what we can do is we can say okay um load accumulator with player player is dying uh if that's not equal to zero then we go to dying which is going to be here Otherwise, we're going to do all of this, and then we're going to jump to. Stop! Uh, oh, I'm on the wrong instruction set. Done player. Uh, jump player player dot dying. So now, what should happen is if we hit the um, if we hit the mine, we should lose control of the ship. It should just stop moving. The exhaust should stop happening. Um, the mace should stop updating, and all the con all the controls should should stop uh, responding, and that should happen for about five seconds, and then we should regain control again. So that that's going to simulate our kind of respawn for now, anyway. Uh... 
I was so annoyed that you just you just know. Oh, man. You missed you missed SP, uh, Sean. Guessing the the series, um, guessing the series from one picture, so you get he guessed correctly that the um, uh, that the uh, blah, 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 that the series was about TV shows set in Boston from one picture, um. And then he guessed he guessed some fairly well. It's not that obscure, but he guessed a a, a a a program that was there. I'm starting to think he actually is hiding in my room. There it goes. So I can't control now. And then five seconds later, I get control again. So perfect. So that's kind of doing what we want now. Instead of just losing control, what will happen is this routine will also do some other stuff. So it's it's going to hide the sprite, for instance. Um, uh, and so on but also at the very end of it it will check if we need to respawn as well um so let's go ahead and and, and do these things in here so uh we decrease the player is dying that that obviously has to happen we can do this at the very end though so we'll do this here um and what we need to do is when that value hits zero so if it's not zero we jump to here but if it is does hit zero then we can just jump to spawn player because now what we need to do is instead of um, exiting this function, we can jump into this one and do our player spawn routine in here. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, which other ones have you tried that didn't? Because so, I'm, I'm concerned that I'm concerned that one of them um maybe should have been should, oh shit i keep doing that not that you're going to get much from that anyway anymore you have most of them uh, i don't know that's it should should work okay Uh, okay, so uh, spawn player. Let's let's work out the spawn player now. At the moment, spawn player is always spawning us in the same place. Uh, it's it's spawning us in this spawn x spawn y. That is, well, we can kind of do that for now, but it is going to need to change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this code uh, all of that code like that. including the sprite pointers as well, actually. Um, and I'm going to put this in the spawn player. So I'm going to call spawn... No, let's miss the piece off at the bottom. So this bit as well. So obviously we need to turn the is dying off. Um, spawn player. Uh, and that can go in here. Now, that what that means is when we die, we'll respawn uh, where we originally spawned position on the screen, on the screen that we spawned on. We need to make it so when we change screens, that becomes our new spawn point. Um, I will tell you now, just because I, I don't want you to feel like you've um, you've guessed one that isn't there. One that you've already guessed um, should be there. So I don't know if the timer had run out or something like that, but um, one that you guessed that didn't show up um should should actually be there so uh do do guess again i'm not going to tell you which ones they are but <laughs> how many are you missing two okay but yeah i'm not going to tell you what they are but yeah there's there's definitely uh there's definitely two more that um i think i know what the the two are as well hang on let me check Yes, I know what the two are. Okay, you've you've mentioned one and the other one you haven't. So <laughs> I 
Oh, did that? I swear the timer did something weird then. That was a bit odd. Okay. Uh, okay. So spawn player is going to make the player appear at this location. So, well, you'll see what will happen when I do this. Um, so it's going to it's going to start out okay. The player is not going to disappear. So let's make the player disappear here. So in that case, what we can do is we can just take um, our player position and we can just move it like off screen somewhere. So the easiest way to do that is going to be with our Y position here. Um, so we're just going to go to hide player. Uh, it really doesn't matter where the player is because not, nothing's going to have any effect on the player. Um, and the player isn't going to exhaust any, uh, it, it expel any exhaust particles. Uh, but we do just need to make sure that it's um, off screen so it doesn't get shown. So we move it to FF. And that actually has the effect of not um, not sorting it in the multiplexer as well. So um, so it actually saves a little bit of performance there as well. Okay, so you see where we started? We started at this position here. That's what is recorded as our spawn X and our spawn Y. So what will happen is when I die, see, I'm, I'm taken off the screen now, but then when I get put back on again, it's going to put me somewhere where you can see me there. I'm, I'm kind of in the middle of the screen here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that whenever we change screens, Whenever the screen transition is finished, that we record those positions as our new spawn X and spawn Y, which means they no longer should be um, constants, uh, but instead they should be spawn X and spawn Y. And then what we need to do is make those into two values in here. Actually, that needs to be a bigger value, doesn't it? Spawn X, spawn Y. So this actually needs to be a word. And then we need to take these values and store them in here in the init function. So before, because when the player starts, so when the game starts, this is the initial location. So we do need to take our initial spawn X, but then we need to store it at this location which uh, is because it's a word, it means we also need to um, take this value and store it in here as well. Okay, and we need to do the same with the Y. So this is given as an initial uh, spawn point. So let's put a little thing in here. And then when spawn player happens, it will spawn us in the correct place. Now, what we do need to do here is this is a uh, positions that are fractional and such. Um, this needs to change slightly. So these are the fractional positions. So we set fractionals. This is the MSB, which we'll look at in a second. I'm going to move this one up to here so it's spawn x uh, plus zero uh, becomes uh, player x plus one and then we also need to do spawn x plus one which is the msb uh, which becomes player x plus two which becomes the x msb up here so so that's correct there uh, then we need to do the same with player uh, spawn y which is also oh there's no msb so that's everything's fine there that's good Okay, so that that is our our positions. I don't know why I need to write X and Y there, but I'm going to. Um, and now what we need to do is we need to change these values. So whenever we whenever we exit the screen, we need to change what spawn X and spawn Y are. So we're going to have a look at map loader. Uh, there is a routine in there. There's map loader. Maps. Map loader. There we go. So there is a transition that happens, uh, which is not here, not here. 
next screen not quite uh here it's this shift so whenever we do the shift these values get put into the new location and there should be something which says that we're finished shifting so i need to figure out where that is um scrolling map direction ah here we go so this becomes negative so if i take a look in the game loop what you will see um you can see here how we're, we're we're deciding whether we need to scroll or whether we're in a normal frame so in the scrolling this is what happens but then at the very end of scrolling this will now be um uh, this will now be negative when we're finished so what we can do is we can do a little test here which says if the value is positive then we don't need to do anything we just we just keep scrolling however if we have reached the, the finishing point then at this point now we can grab our player position so if we have a look in map loader you will see that player position is shifted uh, in these routines so y position is shifted x position is shifted so at this point when we reach here in the code player has scrolled into new screens spawn location so we're in that we're in that that spot that is considered our um spawn location now oh my god you got that one as well is that all of them what was the other one you didn't get uh oh sent elsewhere yeah well done you got the whole series yeah I honestly, I, I honestly thought that was going to be the hardest one. I really, really strongly believed that was going to be the hardest one, and you you nailed it in like less than an hour. So, god damn it! This is why I need you guys to um to come up with series, because any series I come up with, SP just knows. SP is just somehow connected to my brain and just knows exactly what I'm thinking. Out of interest, what made you think of Boston as the connection? Because the interesting thing was there were lots of different routes you could have gone down, especially with Cheers as the first one. So with Cheers as the first one, you could have thought, you know, 80s, um, 80s sitcoms, things set in bars, things starring Ted Danson, you know, it could have been it could have been anything. Um read a wiki on cheers. <laughs> My God. Uh, uh, if you like C64 code in C4 community, have you ever used things like cell or graph call it's a little cause it's 64 K okay, ballpark each. Um it's not so oh god a new one. <laughs> it's not so much the um the, the the memory limits, although they do have a some effect. Hey, Warlock, uh, it's more to do with the the Vic. Is the reason I like it. The the chips that are actually used within the the Commodore sixty four. It's the same reason I like um, uh, the Mega sixty five because it, it it's kept some of that kind of magic of the Commodore sixty four. It feels like a a, a Commodore sixty four still while you're coding it, even though it has the power of like two Amiga twelve hundreds linked together or some something crazy. So no, I haven't I haven't really tried, but um, um but yeah, I I I kind of yeah hit the metal graphics part, and that's the kind of thing I like, and especially with what the Vic Two brings as well. The Vic Two was kind of unique at its time. It it did things in a, uh, it took the best of lots of um, uh, lots of different um, machines of the time, and kind of made something special out of out of all those bits uh the sega saturn sega saturn is too too modern for my liking it's 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 the kind of start of that 32-bit era it's um games weren't really written in assembly anymore they started being written in um in c instead uh and it was all about you know 3d engines um rather than than kind of well-made 2d games so I, I don't really I don't really get on well with that that kind of era. I mean I I would like to do something on that, but honestly, if I was to do something from that era, it would probably be the Game Boy Advance, um, because I've always wanted to try um, um, ARM code, uh, and if I could do something that was kind of half C half ARM and just kind of use C for the logic, but use ARM for the 
um, for the fast kind of um, optimization stuff, then that's probably what I'd use use it for. Um, anyway, yeah, let's let's get back on this. So you've discovered a new series. Anyway, this this one should be pretty simple to figure out what it is. Um, the Saturn can be used as a big two D machine. Yeah, I, I'm sure it can, but I mean, you wouldn't. If you're going to write a 2D game, you wouldn't necessarily pick the Saturn as as your platform. You would pick something like the SNES or the Mega Drive or something like that. There, there's not really a lot of point in writing a 2D game on a Saturn, other than the fact that you can obviously do uh, more sprites, more layers, and things like that. But um, yeah. Oh, this is Cars Ion. You wish. <laughs> you wish. Uh, okay, what was I doing? Oh, yes. Yeah. So uh, here we, we know that the player has uh, scrolled into the new screen's lot spawn location. So what we can do is we can take uh, player player x plus... Now, there is a fractional value, so we don't take the fractional. We take the plus, plus 1 here, and we store that at player plus spawn x plus 0. And then we do the same with the MSB. And we do the same with the Y, which is just a single value, an 8-bit rather than a 16-bit value. Yeah, it's one thing I've noticed, and I'll be playing Resident Evil tonight on the PSX when I'm finished, um, is that those games from that era really haven't aged well at all. Because they didn't, you know, the PlayStation had problems with perspective correction, um, you know, there wasn't a bilinear filtering, trilinear filtering really wasn't a thing on the PlayStation. I think the, the Nintendo had it to a certain extent. Um, and the resolution was such that really the only reason things look good at the time is because we didn't have 3D games. So these were the first games that really um, used 3D to any kind of serious uh, extent. And so they stood out. They stood out like, you know, you know, oh, wow, look at this game. Look at Ridge Race. It looks amazing. It looks realistic. And it didn't, of course, it didn't. But we were just weren't used to seeing that. We were used to seeing 2D. So when things started moving in 3D, they looked amazing. Um, and 64 had filtering. But yeah, I thought so. Because I, I remember the first time I saw the, the Nintendo 64, I thought, oh, God, these textures look really smooth. And then you would go to what, like... like um, the one the game that always got me on the PlayStation was Tomb Raider when you were running down corridors like very very tight narrow corridors on Tomb Raider and you looked at the textures at the side you could see the the texture kind of warp as it was as two triangles were drawn but the triangles didn't line up properly the 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 pex, uh, the, the um the correction wasn't there on the on the textures the perspective correction so so the textures would wobble for one they looked incredibly pixelated and they didn't line up properly. So yeah, I find texture mapping exactly. Sort of thing you get when you just do um, triangle mapping. So you get two, two triangles, you just put a picture on it and then you skew the you skew the triangle. It's, so it's a technique that was used a long time ago in, in things like Flash and stuff to do uh, with like the Away 3D engine to do um, to do those kind of weird um, pseudo 3D engines. But um but yeah, it just it it was always very distracting. So when I saw that on the, the Nintendo sixty four, I thought, oh my god, this is this is actually very very impressive what they're doing. Um, but yeah, this is why what we're doing with the uh, Mega sixty five and the um, the Mario Kart engine is is kind of so cool. So hopefully we should spawn at the top where we came into the screen now. And we do cool so that's that's our kind of spawn points right so this should this should equally work in the other direction except we don't actually let me come off the screen on the other side over here there we go right so now if i if i die to these actually it's going to be game over if i die to these isn't it yeah still need to figure out why that bug happens okay so that seemed to work all right. Let's let's uh let's go down this way again, but let's not die and let's come off the screen. We need to figure out why those mines aren't working on that side. I might start on this other screen in a minute. I might change the start screen. So if we come uh on this side. 
is that bug because it's not testing above? Yeah, maybe. Well, it it's not actually testing. It's um, it's a range check. So it's actually doing um, it's actually doing a circle co collision of two circles. Um, so it just takes the the position of the mine, the position of the player, and just works out how far from the center of the mine you are. But it, it obviously seems to fail for some reason. Um, and I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, it could be that the center calculation is worked out incorrectly. It might be running from here instead of like the middle or something. I'm not sure. Um, because if I if I shoot, let me shoot that one and shoot that one and see if I can sneak in here. Yes, yeah, see, it triggers when I get level with it. All right, so I should appear again on this side because this is the side I came in on. Okay, cool. Uh, the reason it's it's putting me where it's putting me and and facing me the wrong way is because that's just uh, you'll see when I that's where I end up when the screen. That's because of the way that the the screen actually works with um, when you enter the screen. It always leaves you so you can immediately go down. So see, I can immediately go down in this case. There, there you go. Underflow, maybe it could be to do with the uh, the position as well, the uh, the uh, the MSB being over this side of the screen. But um... <coughs> oh my god, <coughs> it doesn't explain why they uh, they trigger from the top though. That would be uh, that would be my thought. Yeah, uh, I might know if it should be at cost of fortune to keep it on their own. Hey, it's good monkey. Welcome. How are you doing? Well, uh, let me just get my windows sorted out. My windows are all over the place for some reason. There we go. Uh, top is plus. Uh, well, top is plus above is. Top is plus above above is store the direction we can. Oh, the, you mean the direction we're facing when we come in? Yeah, that's that should probably happen as well. Um, so I'm just trying to work out what um, what Andy's on about negative numbers. All oh, right, yeah, yeah, it's it's going to be something like that. The thing is, these were working, so that that's the unusual thing. So I'm just going to start on this side of the screen first. Um, and I'm also going to keep that um, that as well. All right, so let's start on screen 23 now. Uh, that's using game loop, uh, which was where we were starting before we kind of destroyed everything. Not destroyed everything, kind of changed everything. Let's take a look. So we do want to record the direction that we come in. I think that's absolutely important. Um, makes makes absolute sense uh, for us to do that. It should be an easy thing to do as well. Sobfu, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Um, and Law with 15 as well. I think I missed that one. Uh, so thank you for the follow. That was 40 minutes ago. So apologies for not uh, not mentioning that. Or maybe I did. I don't know. Now Cole's starting to take hold now. Yeah, yellow text. Yeah, I did change it. I can't remember who asked. It was you. Was it you who asked about that? Yeah. See, they're not triggering now. But let's see if I'm on the negative side of these. Okay. In other words, they're in a negative direction. So when they're in a negative direction vertically, now can I get to this without triggering it? Okay. So yeah. So Andy, you are right. It is something to do with that because if I if I'm underneath it. I don't seem to trigger it. I have to be alongside it. So the next question is, hang on, let me think about this. I'm going to give you some points for that because I think you're in the you're in the right uh, ballpark there. So let's give you anti magic knight. Let's keep plus five for that. Uh, okay, so. Uh, 
Uh, good night, Sean. Uh, oh, yeah, good luck with your house move. Let me know how it goes as well. Send me your address as well so I can send you this game. Uh, I'm going to send you a copy of Dot Cosmos. It can be the first thing that you get delivered from me. So just, uh, yeah, send me your address when you get when you get a chance, and um, I will uh, I will send that along to you. Um, but yeah, congratulations and uh, and good luck with the move tomorrow. I hope it goes smoothly. I, moving is so stressful, so um, I, I completely I completely understand if you're just pissed off all day. But it's probably exciting for you because it's your 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 first kind of uh, big move, and you're moving into a house you're buying. So that's pretty good. Something I've not done yet, so I have no intentions of buying a house. The address is D eight hundred. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, send send to me and I'll uh, I'll send you something in. I'll send you this in the post. Okay, uh, all right. Let's take a well. Let's do two things. Let's store the direction that we come in. That's a pretty easy thing to do. So we're just going to have a look at the player. We should have something which says a state here, uh, face left, face right. So player state. Uh, we're just going to record that. So whenever we change screen, we're going to record whether or not we're facing left or right. So uh, easy one to do. So that's here. So we're going to load a human air player uh, state. And we're going to store that at player dot. Actually, that player state could be used for is dying as well. Uh, so we'll, 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 we'll change that in a minute. So spawn face. Or we'll call it, yeah, spawn face. Sounds weird, but. Uh, but we're just going to get the two values that we need from this, which is uh, state left, state right. Because we don't want all the states to be um, recorded. In fact, we're going to use uh, the player state to record whether or not we're dying. Um, so I'm going to do that now down here. So uh, thank you very much for the... <laughs> Thank you very much for the follow. Satan's Nips. I like that name. It's a good name. It's kind of stupid, but I love it. It's good. Uh, so we're going to also end this now with um, player.states is dying. So instead of using that one byte, we can just use this, um, this state switch here. Um, Oh no, we need to, no 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 we need to use it because we're using it as a timer, so it's fine. Okay. Okay, but we need to add spawn face in, so we've got up here uh player spawn face. And the default spawn face direction is to the right, so we just need state face right. Um and store that in spawn face. Uh, so we'll do that here. And then in the spawn, we actually need to implement it. So facing All right, so we're going to load a player state. We're going to end it with 255 minus the states that we don't care about. So that's going to be face right plus face left. And then we're going to or it with player, uh, sorry, spawn face. Cool. So that should now record the direction we're going, and then we'll have a look at that. Um, Why is that not loading? Ah, because I've got it open here. This stream is fine if you're studying 1975. Yeah, yeah, this is kind of kind of old stuff, but it's um it's interesting. I think assembly is a really good thing to learn uh, for any uh, for any IT course um, because it gives you a really good grounding in um, in the way CPUs work, and that will help you understand compilers and things like that. So. Um, 
assembly is going to be as, as close as you get to kind of the CPU, and it really helps you understand. This is why university courses have you do some kind of assembly so you can understand registers, flags, uh, program counters, stack, and stuff like that, so you can really understand what's going on uh, under the hood. Um, They never teach six five zero two. They may they may have done back in the day, but they don't don't anymore, unfortunately. Uh, it's a shame because it's freaking awesome. It's the best one. Okay, it's failing somewhere. Where is it failing? Oh, state face. Ah, uh, because this needs to be. Uh, wait, not that one there. It needs to be this one in here. Should be. Layer. Dot state face left. Uh, actually, I'm going to do this. Yeah, there we go. That's fine. Why? Oh, have I made them constants? See, this is why. This is one thing I really don't like about um, about Kick Assembler. If you make them constants, they're not accessible outside that scope, uh, and that should be seventy because that's our actual spawn location for the for the first screen. So let's put that back in. Oh, but it's uh, that's why because it spawns us in a freaking wall. That's why it was changed. <laughs> open university, yeah, I know open university. It's it's kind of uh, it's kind of useful. Oh, okay, you've guessed the second one. So kind of you must you must know. Uh, you must know roughly what this this series is about it's not a difficult one i assume this would be one of the easiest ones to figure out um, but i guess i don't know how uh subjective the the answers actually are let's see expensive sports cars in the world oh that didn't spawn me in the right direction but that's interesting That's interesting. It didn't spawn me in the right direction. Spawn next, spawn, spawn face. Should be reading these values. Uh, okay. Which means in here it should be setting those values. Takes yeah okay so that should be okay interesting and then player spawn should be putting it back spawn player take player state oh because I'm not storing it again there we go calculating the value and they're not actually putting it anywhere <clears throat> only nine million yeah <laughs> so i don't know i don't know how up to date this list is um i didn't actually check the date on it um but some of these cars i'm fairly certain are, are relatively new uh like within the last year or two so i'd assume it's fairly up to date but also, I'm not sure how they work out the the value, whether it's based on private sales, you know, uh, or what. I'm not I'm not sure how they do it. Like for instance, I think I think some of the cars are one offs. They've only ever made one of these cars, um, so uh, you know, it's uh, that's why I say I'm not sure if it's subjective or not. All right, let's die now. So, so we should be facing left when we come back in. And we're not, we're facing the wrong way. Okay. Um huh. take the player state, yes. And it with left and right, so we only get the value of the left and right bit. Uh thank you for the follow, Jabu10245. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. Happy Thursday and all that. 
do you need two bits for two directions? Oh, that was kind of an old one there. Um, uh, yes, it is. We are using two bits. We've got. Um, uh, da, da, da. You can see here, facing left and facing right, um, which I should be restoring. I'm not sure why it's not restoring those values properly. Um, so what I want to check is if this is being set anywhere else. Um, like, is it is it being reset somewhere or something? I'm not sure. So when we go to move left, it sets face left. When we go to move right, it sets face right. What I'm trying to work out is this, is something in here resetting that value um, before or, or, or immediately after that value gets kind of set by the... Um, Uh, by by the spawn routine. Are you storing it in the value that's used to move? Oh, say value. Oh yeah, yeah, it would be enough to do to do left and right. But um, the the problem with that is then I don't have a constant that I can. I don't have one constant for left and one constant for right. I have a is left. And I have to work with that. So yeah, I could use one bit instead of two, but I'm I'm just using two. It doesn't really make a huge difference. Just just makes some of the logic a little bit easier to work with. Uh, it means I can copy paste chunks a lot easier for left and right. One bit's not a problem. Uh, are you storing it in the value that's used to move and not a save value? Okay, so I think I get what you mean there. All right, so let me take a look. Uh, so this is the game loop. Uh, this is the thing. No, it's been stored in the spawn face. Spawn face is not being used to. This is just like we've got spawn X, spawn Y, and spawn face. So that tells us which direction we're facing and where we are. Uh, and that is when the scroll happens, that is what's being recorded. And that is taking just those two values. So the bit for player face left and the bit for player face right. Uh, it's and in those two bits. So this value will only ever be. Uh, one or or two, so uh, you could now be left and right at the same time. That's true, but um, but the routine, the left and right, will always fix those. Um, so you'll see in the control. Uh, whenever we change those, we the first thing we do is we uh, oh, that's not the control, but it's doing it there as well. Uh, whenever we change, then the first thing that we do is we 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 remove those bits off so we end it with the, the kind of inverse of those so um, yeah it, it seems a little bit kind of wasteful but for one bit it's not a huge problem and it does make the logic a lot easier to to deal with um, because you don't have to toggle a bit you can just reset both bits and then just turn the one on that you want it means you can copy paste this chunk of code somewhere else and the, all the branches are the same and everything uh, you're just changing this four characters here basically to right instead of left um but anyway that's not the problem the problem is that something is not spawning the player properly at this point so what i'm going to do i'm going to put um the breakpoints work now i think they do don't they i'm going to put a breakpoint in here we're going to take a look at what that value is in the accumulator because I think that it's being written and then something's overriding it. So, okay, so this is the place born. No, wait, why is it why is it load accumulated zero there? Oh, because it's there, All right. So the accumulator is actually zero two. So that's saying that we're facing right, which is correct. That's that's what we we see when we start the game. We have spawned and we're facing right. So then we go into this screen. We should be facing left when we come onto this screen, which we are. We're going to go over here, and check this. And now if this shows the the wrong number here, 
then we will go and check the save to see that that's correct as well. So the accumulator is showing uh, zero one. So it is saying that we're facing left. But when we go, we suddenly start facing right. So something is changing after that. So at this point, uh, when the player is spawned, at this very point here, everything is fine. Everything is working absolutely fine. I wonder. Oh, it's this. It's it's freaking this. That's what it is. It's the sprite pointer. We shouldn't be changing that. Let me do that in here. All right. But the sprite pointer should be set based on. Um, uh, bring, bring wing or ing. Are you drunk tonight, Adi? You've not made a lot of sense tonight. You're, 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 you're. I, I've struggled to read your story. You're usually very kind of clear with what you mean, but you've been you've been quite difficult to understand tonight. Or is it because I'm drunk? <laughs> I'm not that drunk, surely. I've re I have actually struggled with what you've been saying tonight. So what I need to check here is that uh, that we spawn um, facing the right direction. If I now turn that 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 uh, sprite off, but I have a funny feeling that it's just going to face whatever direction I am currently facing in. So let's first of all let's see if it if it actually works. Yeah, big legs. You ah, I see. Okay, okay. So that's now actually spawning in the correct location, correct face, but. I want to try now coming at the other um or the other side. So uh, did I change? No, I haven't changed anything. I I honestly think, I think it's uh I just think it's Twitch. The the service is very erratic. Unless you're a partner, um the service is very erratic. You you're you're kind of a lower tier of 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 human beings. So they they drop you down into a uh, quality and stuff when the partners need it. So. So we're going to face this direction and get hit this time. Okay, yeah, so it, it's spawning is in whatever direction we were facing in last. So it's ignoring the kind of, it's ignoring the sprite pointer updates. That's the problem. Uh, and that's probably because they're set in here somewhere. Uh, let's have a look. So we've got left. Yeah, see, look, we're we're setting these values in the in the multiplexer. So I'm gonna go and change these uh, to 49, and what was the one to be 48? If it's right, I guess yeah, 48, 49. Okay, so this is this is pretty easy to do. Um, it shouldn't take a long time. Also, I I think the collision is just off. I think all the collisions checks are off by a little bit for some some weird reason. I'm not entirely sure why. So. I uh, need to look at that in a second and figure out what that is. But here, when we do when we do this, um, we need to uh, and that value with uh, state face left. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll we'll by default we'll set uh, we'll use x for this. So we're going to load X with 40A, which is our facing right. Um, so you can do this here. Okay. Then we're going to end the accumulator to see if we're facing left. If we are facing left, uh, then we, we're going to set this to 49. However, if we're not facing left, uh, we will retain the 48. So this needs to be, if we're not facing left, so in other words, if this value is 0, and we jump to here. No, uh, if we are facing left, sorry. Wait, no. Yeah, if we're not, f hang on. Yeah, if we're not facing left, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so I should fix that. And then we need to figure out what the hell is going on with the uh, the collision. There's some really weird stuff going on with the collision, I think. So I noticed that I didn't, uh, I didn't take damage. I didn't, you know, I didn't get hit by the, uh, 
the thing coming off the uh, off the mine for some reason. Uh, and also the, the the bit that we know, which is these aren't trigger for whatever reason. But it seems like if I'm below one of these things, I don't even get hit by the bullet. So if I'm like here. Oh, no, I did that time. Okay, maybe it's just inconsistent. All right, probably going to have to work on this a little bit. It's a bit annoying because this has uh, been more than I really wanted to do. But yeah, that was facing the right direction this time, so that's good. Okay, let's see what's broken about this. So if I go up here, see, that didn't hit me. That should have hit me, and it didn't. Okay, so this is a good screen to work on next. So let's start by figuring out these things here. Let me put my lives back up now. I don't need the game to reset now. Uh, and turn the border color change off. Get rid of that because we know that's kind of working. So what we're looking at is collision. So this happens, um, is it these ones? I th I think it's in these ones. There's there's a uh shit did I can't remember where it is. So I didn't actually I use a square table, isn't it? That's what I do. Square No. Okay, maybe it's not in that one then. Items part of it. I think it's in destroy. I think it is in here. Maybe it's not actually. This is item drops, hit piece. So this is just hitting the, the explodable things here. Seem to shoot bullets in two of the four directions. I think it does shoot in all the directions, but for some reason, something's absorbing them. Or maybe it is only shooting in two directions. Maybe that's part of the problem. Um, but the biggest problem at the moment is that we're not triggering those mines from underneath, um, which is the, the the serious, serious issue that we need to resolve. Uh, this That should not be happening. But let's let's go and uh, trigger one of these and move away from it very quickly. All right, let's keep an eye on that. So it did fire too, but it seems if it's right up against the wall, it doesn't show the ones. Oh, no, see, it is firing in all directions. Okay. Not sure what that is. We'll we'll come back to that. Let's do let's do these uh, these mines. So I need to figure out where the hell my um uh my range check is. I can't remember at all where it is. Squares, table squares. Okay, table squares. So power ups. No entities. That's it. Entities. Here we go. Get distance player to entity. Okay, so. So we have a dx and a dy. So we have the, the distance x and the distance y, or the delta x, delta y. So this is our, our um, distance between um, uh, between the, the, the player and wait, hang on. Oh, it actually returns and it's something in the accumulator. Okay, so let's go and have a look at this. So this actually returns the distance x squared and the distance y squared added together, which gives us the hypotenuse um, of, of the triangle. In other words, it gives us the distance squared. We don't want to do a square root. That's expensive. We can just test uh, the square of the distance instead. Um, and that's enough for us to do a distance check. If you know something will explode if you're within 10 units of it, then instead of using Pythagoras to work out your distance exactly um, and checking it to see if it's less than 10, um, what you would do instead is you would do half of the Pythagoras, but you wouldn't do the final square root. And instead of checking your, your distance against 10, you would check your distance squared against the, the range squared. So you would check your distance squared against 100. Uh, and that means you don't have to do that square root. It makes it a lot easier. Uh, I mean, obviously, this only works if um, it, it, well, I guess, yeah, it kind of only works if you're, you're, uh, you're, 
you can use some constants somewhere in there. Um, if everything has to be calculated, then you, it's not really going to make much of a difference. But um, oh, nice! You get in them all now. <laughs> some of these names are. Some of these names are really, really bad. Uh, oh yeah, I'm not. Oh, well spotted. This is in the X though, so. Um, but that's a very good point. We're not clearing the carry bit there. Uh, wow, you are super lagged. <laughs> you are you are super lagged. Uh, however, oh no, yeah, yeah, you're right. That is that should be a clear there. Oh, uh, uh, shit! All right, I need to think about this. Need to think about this. I need to be very, very careful. So I take the player center of the player and I subtract. And if the value is negative, then I need to negate it. So I need to E with FF uh, and plus one and then store that value in DX and then compare that. Okay, so this is set because of the compare, so that's fine. If we, if our value is so th this is an early exit function uh, functionality. So what this is doing is it's comparing our delta value. Uh, to the maximum distance, so the distance that we we consider to be the range, um, and if it's if it's uh, less than that, then we carry on. If it's more than that, we can just exit because if any any of the x or y distances is longer than the range, then the hypotenuse, you know, the distance squared is going to be longer than the range as well. Um, so yeah, if this if this works, Andy, that's a ten pointer, I think. Well spotted, though. I mean, it's a bug either way, right? But um, so it's either a it's a five pointer if the if this if the mines don't trigger on this next screen, it's a five pointer. If they do trigger, it's a ten pointer. So what do you reckon? Oh, so it's not it's not the issue, but it's it's definitely uh, had a you know it's it's definitely it definitely was an issue. But it wasn't the issue. But it's still five points. That's good. You're the only person to score points tonight. So the next question is, why is this value not, um, you know, not the right, right, right value? Let's. So there's some early exits here. So let's go to this bit where it doesn't early exit. And let's take a look at what these values are um, in in DX and DY, and see if we can work out from that what um, the the values are. So we have a, a square table. So this is our this is our distance here, and then we use these values to look up in a table. So ideally, these would be quite low values, or the maximum distance would be a low value. So one of these is going to be um, wrong, I'd assume. Now, hopefully, this triggers at the right time. Um, it exists if x is out of range and never checks y. Um, yeah, if x is out of range, it exits, yeah. Because why would it need to check y? No, it never, never actually needs to test that. However, could it be the MSB stuff here? Play a center x. Hmm, okay. Oh, no, this is... This is using character space as well. This isn't using sprite space. So this is using character space. So these these values that are passed in here are just character locations. But it does because it's below and not to the side. Yeah, but if your dist if your x distance is ten away from something, it doesn't matter where you are, you're still out of range of it. doesn't matter if you're above below or, or what you're still going to be way out of range so i think the problem here is is to do with the fact that it's character space rather than anything else i'm just going to have a look and see what the, see what values it pumps out i think it's because it's character space object to object not yes object to object not screen yeah exactly uh, it wouldn't wouldn't make any sense to do it at screen space
Come on. It's all right. You're allowed to be rusty. Okay, so because we're not close to anything, it's not triggering that break. But I'm hoping when I come in here, it triggers some breaks, but it's not doing, you see. So now the question is, is it triggering the X break and is it triggering the Y break? So let's let's move uh, this break point up a little bit. So let's... Uh, it does the X check first. So let's do a, a thing here. So now we're going to check, are we within X range? And if we are, then we're going to trigger this out. Now, this should trigger as soon as I enter the screen from that side. I don't think there's anything else on this screen that's classed as a as a ma an entity that we have mapped because uh, these aren't these aren't turned on uh, and these don't have any range checking on them. I don't know if we can even explode them yet. Yeah, we can. OK, but they don't have any range checking on. Now, those things will do. Um, but in here, there we go. So we've hit that now. Um, and our DX value. OK, where is our DX value? Oh, God, I don't know where that is now. OK, it's an easy way to do. Uh, is that in zero page? It must be in zero page. Yeah, AE, OK. Our distance is zero, which which kind of looks about right. If you think about, um, actually, is this? Okay, I, I think what I need to do is I, I need to, I need to think about this in terms of the why. Let's take a look at that and what's being passed into this function. So let me close all these other other things down. I don't need all of these other, other things. Just need the entity one. Okay, and we need to figure out where that's being passed in. So this is going to be called from the entity up. update mine. Here we go. And there'll be a few of these. There'll be one for spikes as well. But basically, Mine activate distance. Okay, so this is the, the the distance you need to be away from them to trigger them. Um, and then the other values. Player center X, player center Y. Okay, so let's have a look how they're calculated. So I would hope that these are, if these are character values, they're calculated from, from the center of the player. Um, not just some kind of shoddy way of doing this. Hopefully it's hopefully it's done properly. But who knows? Ah, okay. Interested. Okay, so record the center of each player. So this is taking our position. Um in the X in the X in the X axis. Uh it's taking of oh actually that's Oh, whoa, 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 what is that? Oh, I think I put a D on the end one. I shouldn't have done. I think that's what it is. I think that's what it is, and I think this is going to work fine now. Unfortunately, we're going to get a freaking break point now, aren't we? But I think that's I think that's what's happened here. Yeah, there we go. God damn it, that's what it was all along. So at some point, I've obviously I, I've hit I've hit a key somewhere and, and done that by mistake. Yes, it was. It was when I was using AWSD instead of the cursor. That is, you're right. You're right, that's exactly what I've done. God damn it. All right. Oh, well. You get a D for that bug. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, at least we've figured it out. And it was just a case of backtracking through to find out why the values were wrong. I, I thought it was weird because it was happening perfectly fine the other, the other day, and then all of a sudden it stopped working. And I was kind of hoping it wasn't something related to the masks. 
um, because that was kind of the last thing I did. Uh, I couldn't I couldn't think why it was, but um, my brain kept going to that. All right, let's try that out again. So hopefully now this should work a little bit better. Well, that was, that was a bit of a waste of half an hour, wasn't it? But um, that's fine. It's always good to see the debugging process anyway. Um, so you can see how we work that out. We just kind of kind of worked our way backwards from the values. Oh shit, that hit me as well. We got you. It did get you ten points. That's a, that's a good point. Yeah, this is working perfectly now. God damn it! That's all it was. All right. Um, okay. Cool. So the next thing to do then is to actually make the the explosion happen. So this is just a matter of um, drawing some particles uh, where the player was and giving them velocities in various directions. So I think the way I'm going to do this is I'm um, for every frame in the first. 10 frames of the of the uh of the death routine um i'm going to generate four particles that start in the center where the player where the player position is plus a little bit left or right um pete you didn't hit the wrs key it would have been yeah that's a good point actually that's a very very good point um you've just given me a reason to not use wasd anymore Maybe I should start using T T F G H instead, and then and then if I do, oh no, that wouldn't work either. Y G H J, yeah. I just need to move around the keyboard until I find a location that doesn't have a hexadecimal on it. That seems seems a bit extreme. Um, but this is another reason why it's good. Um, so let me just go back to where the bug was. This is another reason why it's good to always write the full digit out, even with the leading zeros. A lot of people would just write that. And if that was the case, and I did that, that would have been a lot harder to spot. I mean, thankfully, I know that that value would would have been too high. Um, but that's a, it's another good reason. So if you do, if you do make a mess of something, um, you can look at it. So, so straight away, the thing that made me realize that would... Um, was that it was three digits instead of two. John would just put in a decimal. Yes, I mean, we need to get John using hexadecimal all the time because um, it does help you think about things a lot better. And the more you work in hexadecimal, even when you, you could really just use a decimal number, um, if you just use hexadecimal instead, uh, you start thinking about things uh, better. See, I've, I've, I'm not doing it here as well, and I should be doing that, so I'm going to do that now. Um yeah, you, you start you start thinking about the uh, the things a bit more. So, just the arrow keys. I do have arrow keys. I'm not I'm not on a sixty percent keyboard anymore. I'm on the uh, I'm on the dear god, um, uh, like the ten keyless keyboard. Actually, the sixty percent does. My sixty percent keyboard does have um, arrow keys on it. But um, yeah, I'm kind of hoping actually the next challenge, uh, John finds it a bit more his kind of thing uh, because even though it is about optimization it's going to be about thinking of the algorithm a bit more than the the uh the optimization i think the algorithm is going to be the key thing in fact i, I will i'll maybe talk to you after stream and in and tell you what my idea is because uh, i do want to get some feedback before i go ahead and, and uh and write the little bootstrap program for it but um i think it's going to be an interesting one I think John Delivery comes last. <laughs> he likes his structured code. That's the thing. But the, the problem with uh, assembly is um, assembly is not uh, not really a language that um, benefits from structured code um, other than it makes it more readable. Um, good assembly is always going to be messy and it's always going to be messy because your optimizations are going to make things very unreadable it's just an unfortunate nature of assembly um even failed at coming out so harsh 
so so yeah assembly um and you you know the the best pieces of assembly code are, are always going to be the things that are less easy to read kick kind of helps a little bit by letting and, and other languages help a little bit by letting you kind of make macros and, and labels and things for stuff so you can kind of have some readability to it um but you know tricks like this for instance um i mean i know what it's doing because i'm used to seeing it which is i'm, I'm taking the msb I'm shifting that, then I'm shifting the the lower byte, and then I'm doing my additions with half values here. It's just a it's just an optimization that makes this a little bit quicker to do, um, but it does make it slightly less readable. Um, and there's lots of little things like that in the code all over the place. Um, but you just have to when, especially when you're doing an optimization test, you do have to uh, you do have to take the um, take the kind of low road if you like and and kind of give up the idea of well well readable structured code and go for you know much more um raw kind of uh, optimized code uh zeb Ment, thank you very much for the subscription i very much appreciate it welcome uh like proton's your thing for adding to something that needed yes well that's that's actually quite a common one so if you're adding if you've got a value uh, uh like like that and i want to add eight to it um you would normally have to do a clear carry flag there to make sure that the carry flag is clear and it also means that you can't bank on the carry flag being what you want it to be down here but because you're not changing the the ad here is never changing any of the other bits. If you think about this in binary, um, what you get is so as long as the value that you're adding never affects the bits of the thing that you're adding it to, then you don't need to do an ad. You can just do an or. And in fact, what you will see quite often, even in things like C, uh, when when they have things like state machines and, and stuff, stuff like this, is what you will tend to see is instead of uh, these values being added together. So uh, let's let's assume these were two different states, right? And you wanted both of the states. Um, you would you could think, oh well, I could just add them together, right? And I could you know do C equals that. But what you will quite often see instead is you will see the or symbol um, instead because this was an optimization before you know compilers were super super smart and um and things this was one of the kind of minor optimizations you could do uh, to make things a bit quicker uh, and it's it's an optimization for the same reason uh doing that piece of code the way we've just shown it is an optimization because you don't have to do an addition if you're doing an addition uh then you have to know the state of carry flags and stuff so um, so that that trick is uh, quite well known, especially to to C coders. C coders will, will, will know that from uh, from back in the day, from trying to kind of optimize things manually uh, by doing things like that. Um, I know it from uh, my my first introduction to that was doing C for uh, Quake three mods. Um, so doing. Um, using some operators of cardinals in yeah so quake had a, an entity engine so similar to this actually in the fact they had entities that had states and things um and that also had um uh that all over the place so if if a if an entity was kind of had gravity and it was uh i don't know would kill the player then there would be two states that would be all together to create that so um yeah anyway that's uh enough of that that's but that, that just explains why sometimes optimizations are done the way they're done and this is why i think assembly is a good thing for any any student of kind of programming to learn because it teaches you those little things i think there's far too many coders nowadays who are just kind of spoiled by the c compilers and the the, the massive amounts of memory storage and cpu cores and cpu speed that we have now they're completely spoiled by it all they don't have to know how any of it works all they have to know is some clever algorithms that draw what they want to draw and hope they have a machine fast enough to to draw it or to do it so um another good good thing to do as well i definitely recommend and you can do this with javascript as well um is to look at the compiled code so um i can't remember the name of the tool in javascript but it's for the va engine 
um, and and you can type the code in uh, in JavaScript, and it will show you what the just in, uh, the the JIT compiler uh, compiles it to in assembly. So you can actually look and see what op changes do. There's one for C as well. It's more common that people use it in C. They they you will type something in, you will make a routine, and then when you're optimizing it, you'll bring up the assembly that that the compiler generates, and you can compare like how kind of doing things in different ways using different um uh different data types uh, different kind of primitive types will will change things so uh uh I kind of feel like it's important to be familiar with the details but i'm not knowing them inside of it at least familiar with it yes exactly yeah uh javascript is another v8 does do its own thing but it's really useful to see I learned so much about JavaScript by by seeing the assembly that it outputs, that the JIT compiler outputs. I learned so much about the way you should, um, uh, you know, just little things like if you if you create a class, um, don't instantiate any variables for the first time in the methods. Any variables that get used anywhere, instantiate them, even if you set them to null, um, instantiate them in the constructor. Because if you don't, then the V8 compiler doesn't know what to do with them, and it probably won't optimize those functions. It will probably leave them as um, as non-compiled. So always create your kind of this dot variable blah blah equals null in the constructor, even if you don't use it until some function that gets called, called lo loads of time kind of um, after loads of time it gets called like once in a blue moon, uh, you know, after half an hour of the program running, still initialize that variable even if you just set it to null in the constructor. Um, even better if you know what data type it is then do that because then then it makes the job of the JIT compiler a little bit easier um, which will speed up the actual generation of the assembly even though it will still generate the assembly the same both times because it can infer from the functions um it will it will generate them better also with arrays don't don't mix types in arrays because that's just that's just a recipe for disaster when it comes to the, the va um, I spent more time perfing JavaScript code than you liked it. Yeah, same. <laughs> there's there's tons and tons of tricks like that, and you will learn most of them just by sitting there and watching what the the V8 outputs as you uh, as you code. Um. Anyway, let's uh, let's carry on. Uh, most students today can't even program a higher language with a parrot. Yeah, that that is the problem. The the power of PCs um means that the um. You know they they're using these high level languages with frameworks that they don't even understand. I mean they're barely doing any of the work anymore. Um, you know they're they're writing they're, the number of games I see. I, I've said this before with about pixel art games. So like modern pixel art games on the PC are all made with like there's a handful of engines that do this. Unity is probably one of them, um, and they they have these plugins that do a lot of this work for them so they don't even have to think about how things work uh, in in the pixel art world and so they they just go and make these games and they all feel very similar and a lot of them have the same issues like if you scale pixel art it should scale like pixel art it shouldn't just scale an image up there should be things that um they were and plus they you know i've seen games with relatively simple 2d that could run on a mega drive run like shit on a, on a pc like mine which is meant to like blast through them. and it's simply because they don't understand optimization they're just throwing stuff at um at a program until you know until they run out of processing power it's a shame really um anyway uh let's get back to this so uh we are going to in the player dying routine which is this one here which counts down uh we're going to do some uh stuff here so we're going to spawn particles uh and then this final one is uh decrease timer decrease death timer so for now i'm going to spawn one particle every second and we'll see how that looks and then we'll change kind of how this is working so what we're going to do is we're going to pick uh, some random directions so what i'm going to go and do is i'm going to look at the exhaust code uh from actually it's in here so at the bottom of here so uh, because there is some random number uh stuff in here that generates uh actually this just generates the x fraction so this kind of needs to be wrapped up a little bit all right let's let's do this uh differently so 
how is this working? So it gets next exhaust index and that becomes the next particle. But we don't want to use the exhaust index. We want to use uh, whatever the next particle is. Hopefully there's a next particle or there's an add particle, update particles, uh, next particle. Okay. Oh no, that is to do with the exhaust particle. Oh no, that is actually the bottom one. Okay. Okay, cool. Let's take, I, I need to figure out exactly how to do this. I think the easiest way to do this is look at something that actually does spawn particles. So let's have a look at destroyable. Here we go. So here's where a particle is actually spawned. So add one particle. So let's take a look at everything that that is that's used to create this. So uh, oh, I got this. Okay, this looks like it's creating two particles, but it's not. Oh, this is wait. This is. Wait, 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 what's going on here? Max loads particles, max exhaust particles. Uh, okay, so this gets whatever the next particle is. Why is it checking minus two? Why is it only... I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. This is weird. Why the minus two? What's it checking there? Otherwise, it starts at the beginning again. Okay. Okay. All right. This. All right. Yeah, I can copy this pretty much. All right. Let's just grab that. We need to make a lot of changes to it, but this is kind of along the right lines. So uh, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to create a spawn random particle function. Uh, so I'm, I'm not doing it in the middle here, which is not here. Well, actually, no, it's probably let's, let's just put it in here for now and then I'll, I'll move it if I need to. All right. Because I I don't want I don't want the the overhead of kind of calling uh, a function here um, if I can help it because I may be doing this multiple times. More people the better. I don't like gatekeeping, but it is yeah. I I completely agree. When so I in my previous job I was responsible for kind of interviewing a lot of uh, programmers for for various teams and stuff. And I always found that the, the the best programmers were not the ones that that had the degrees and you know had had everything. They were the ones that when they went home at the end of the day, they programmed. They made games for fun. They did things that they enjoyed, and they they learned how things work. The worst programmers, almost almost universally, were the ones that didn't do that but had had their degrees you know had their computer computer science degree but didn't go home and do anything they assumed that because they had a computer science degree because they knew how to write a little bit of code uh, in java for some some module on a course that they did um that that was enough for them to be a good programmer the degrees the degree says i'm an excellent programmer it's not a it's not a gtsc it's not a you know it's not some kind of uh, some crappy diploma it's an actual degree in in um in computer science therefore i must be an amazing programmer those were the worst programmers because they had no they had no love for what they were doing they had no uh, sense of um no sense of kind of um uh, wonder and discovery they they what they learned what they learned at university was for them considered all they needed to know there was no there was no attitude of kind of wanting to learn more wanting to dig deeper into what they were doing and figure out more so um uh oh my god yeah yeah like how jordy got the on the enterprise <laughs> uh, 
it's true though and and honestly the the i i would say i probably hired a handful of developers who i could i would consider genius developers and i don't think any of them um were what i'd call you know the kind of uh, that that kind of degree degree only developers by all means having a degree helps because having a degree helps you learn the terminology it gets you used to the concepts and stuff but you've got to have an interest in it if you if you're not if you're not coding in your spare time then you're not going to be an amazing programmer I, I hate to break it to people who think that they will but good programmers do it in their spare time as well um Oh yeah, definitely. Degrees do help. They they get you in the right the right frame of mind for doing things, and you can you will discover on a, on a programming course if you are going to be a good programmer or not. What I don't agree with is the people who who think because they've got a degree under their belt, they don't need to do anything else. They don't need to learn anymore. They think they they know everything, and you don't. Unfortunately, a degree is is only going to teach you a tiny tiny fraction of what you need to know to become a good programmer. Program, I mean, yeah, by analyze it exactly. It's all about, um, yeah, and Andy as well. It's all about the passion. It's all about um, you're coding something at work and it gets to half past five. The good coders won't just drop everything and go home. They will finish what they're doing. They will spend the extra 10 minutes, half an hour. In some cases, I've seen coders stick around for another three hours because they're so focused on what they're doing they want to finish it and that's not because anybody's told them to stay it's just because they're so dedicated to what they're doing they're so invested emotionally and kind of in what they're doing that they they want to finish it um and that's that's when you can spot the difference between the good coders and the bad coders so Can a bachelor's in game program help you a lot? Yeah, I mean it gets you gets your foot in the door. That's for sure. I mean, the the unfortunate thing is, is when we when we would look through piles of CVs, you would you couldn't you know you couldn't interview everybody. You had to pick maybe ten, fifteen people off a pile of like a hundred CVs. So you do tend to pick the ones with the the experience, with the um with the right kind of qualifications. You you pick those people first. So. So yeah, it, it does get your foot in the door for definite, uh, but you have to have that um, that hobby mindset. If you don't have the hobby mindset, then then you you're only I mean you might get the job, but you're never going to be like considered an amazing coder. I don't think. Anyway, that's I I don't want to display. I don't want to put anybody off either. Um, as as someone said before, you know, don't let's not gatekeep. We're, the more people are getting to this, the better. But. Um, I just wish people realized that coding isn't just about um, doing three years at university and, and that that's it. Coding is a, something you need to keep doing all the time. You need to be, constantly be learning. Um, and you will, you will, if you enjoy it, then it's not even, doesn't even feel like learning. You're just enjoying what you're doing. Okay, so spawn particles. So this is kind of our get next particle function. I should probably change this. Uh, to a function i am going to change this one to a function because i think this actually needs to be um b1 so let's change this to uh particles get next particle um but yeah i i, I say i don't want to i don't want to gatekeep either I, I think everybody deserves a chance to um chance to prove that they can do the job Get next article, which means I can get rid of that there and I can keep that the same. Okay. So this will always return in Y the next particle. So we can use this to kind of do, do that job there. And it also means we don't have to repeat the code um, in destroyable, wasn't it? Yeah, there we go. It does mean uh, that we've got an overhead of a function call here, which is not super ideal, um, but it's only happening when particles are spawned. So it's not a not a massive. It's not like it's happening at every frame. <laughs> Don't get me started on the uh, on the uh, software sprites thing. 
that's the that's the other side of the coin that's when you've got people who are so so convinced they know every single thing about every topic they refuse to accept that a term that they learned in the early 80s has evolved over time into something that encompasses more than what they originally think it was and i i find that really annoying software sprites yes did used to mean you know a, a smaller thing a smaller range of things than it means now but now software sprite really means yeah it, it means anything a sprite is the is the term uh sprite means oh my god you're you, you're churning through these have you found the list that i was using maybe yeah all right anyway uh Oh yeah, I'm absolutely sure he's going to be be looking at lists to get these. Um, all right, cool. That's uh, cool. He's enjoying it. I, I I think he's he's a bit of a wizard with these these things. My mission now is to find things that he can't figure out. Okay, so screen point is obviously going to be the the spawn location of these things. So you need to figure out what those are. Now we've already got player center. So I'm guessing it's to do with that. Um, but ah, no, this is actually the position on the screen. This is actually the the physical location on, not the physical, the, the memory location of the center of the player. So let's find player center. So that's here, player center X, player center Y. Um, but that doesn't give us a screen location. This is, so. so these values here, these ones here so place center x place center y but that doesn't give us these values here so what we need to do in order to get this screen location is we need to actually do a look up here so what we're going to do is we're going to take the x register uh, and we're going to go take uh player center y and we're going to load uh actually we'll load the x register with that and then we're going to load tables dot screen no have we not got rows table surely we must have a rows table that doesn't make any sense screen row there we go screen row lsb and screen row msb So now we've got our, our, our lower byte, but now what we need to do, uh, so that's this one here, and we need to add a value, and that value is actually the player center X. And then that gets stored here, and it gets stored. I don't know why it's stored in two places. I feel like it's drawing two particles here instead of one particle, but we'll, we'll come to that in a second, because it does seem to be increasing this by two as well. So yeah, I think that's uh, that's actually making two, isn't it? So let's just make this make one, like so. Uh, then that means on this next line, we can also take tables, screen row, MSB, comma, X, we add zero, we don't need the carry flag clearing, and we add that to here. So that's, that's the first two sections done. So that's our actual screen address and our actual X, Y screen uh, location. Um, switch and pc uh uh so it's this this game here this is what the original original game was uh obviously we can't do particles quite on that scale but um we can do a lot of stuff so fine x and fine y so these are our uh oh fine x and fine y oh this is our actual offset uh our, our minor offset so I'm going to I'm going to keep these on zero. I don't see any point in uh in changing these. So what do I mean by uh fine x and fine y here? Well, these are the um so if we take this player center x as our our character location on the screen, then the fine x and fine y are the location within this character. I'm going to keep them at zero for now because it is going to happen quite quickly, so it's not going to make a huge amount of difference. Um, but this is the bit that we're interested in here. So first of all, let's change the increase Y to one. So it was only going up by one. Let's get rid of the second ones of these. 
and we've got delta x uh, and delta y. Now these are our um, particle speeds, um, and I believe there isn't a fractional in here. There should be a fractional. Let me just go and check the exhaust at the bottom of here. So one five nine. We've got about ten minutes left. Hopefully we can get something working in the next ten minutes. So yeah, see that there's fractional values here as well. So I'm going to change these as well. We're going to we're going to use those. Um, so I'm just going to put a random number into the into the fractional. I don't really care which direction this is going in at the moment. Um, but what I do care about is this number here, the, these these first numbers. So what I'm going to do is um, for the x value. Actually, I'm going to start with this. Uh, I'm going to start by not using the fractionals uh, and just do whole number things here. So this needs to be uh, minus one, uh, minus two, minus three, plus one, plus two, plus three, something like that. So the easiest way to do this is going to be to take um, a random number. So we're going to go for this. It's going to give us a, a huge range of random numbers. Uh, then we're going to... Um, and it with 07. So now our value goes from 0 to uh, zero to 7. Um, and then we're going to subtract. What would it be? We subtract 3. So now our number goes from minus 3 to 4. Um, but it also passes through 0. So I'm not happy with the values here. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. Um, I'm going to end it with 03. If it's equal to 0, I'm going to go back and get another number. Uh, so I'm going to end it with 07, like so. There we go. If it's equal to zero, I'm going to go back. So now our number is one to six. Uh, new series. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. What was this one? Uh, who, who's the background? What is the background? Oh, Michael Douglas. There you go. Are you doing a particles? Yeah, yeah. The all the all the particles in the game are um, so all, all the exhaust particles you see here. Uh, they're all, all done with the particle system. The same on here as well. And it works. Works kind of okay. So. Okay, so now I'm not going to subtract 3. Instead, what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to compare this uh, to 0, 4. If it's less than 0, 4, then we're just going to go ahead. However, if it's more than 0, 4, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to end it with 3, 4, 5 there. So now I get a, a value from 1 to 3, and then I'm going to uh you that with ff right hang on let me think about that no that's not it should be uh shit okay hang on let me think about this oh yeah i just need one add in there Run your carry clear. So the carry is set at this point. So I just need to add zero because it'll add one because the carry is set. So that should give me a value from uh, negative three to positive three, but not with zero. So now if I do the same on here, I should get the same effect. So now we've got six different directions in both 
both angles that we can in both uh, x and y six different velocities basically so hopefully this should create it's going to be more of a particle generator at the moment because we're just doing one particle per frame but hopefully this should uh, spawn one particle per frame during the death animation so not sure what it's going to do uh, it's probably going to run out of particles to to use because it's going to it's going to run too quickly but we shall see what happens it might be enough as it is um, but i suspect it's probably not going to be it's probably going to need some uh some other stuff to make this work wait what's unknown symbol which is not equal get next particle okay particle 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 oh shit uh like that there we go uh, distress debt thank you for the follow uh, welcome to the stream hope you're doing well we're down to the last five minutes and then i'm going to put resident evil on so yeah it could lag finding random numbers but you've only got a one in four chance of it having to find again um uh does the plus yes it means uh the the previous label or the or the or the next label um but this is only going to happen during a death routine and it's going to happen once per frame so that lag is an acceptable thing it's only going to be a couple of cycles it's not going to be a huge problem for us i mean obviously if this was happening on, a, on every frame uh then then it would be it would be a very different story indeed okay so it it kind of tried to, yeah, you see it kind of tried to create particles, but then it ran out of particles. It did some weird stuff anyway. So let's try again. You'll see what I mean. So it is creating some kind of particles. Um, it's actually not too bad, but I think what I'd like to do is have them all appear at the same time. Um, if you're setting up random numbers later, find random numbers to a digit, then start a new random number generation from that digit. So uh, clustering is faster than linear number generation. Um, but the random number is always going to be from zero to two, five, five. That's how the random number generator works uh, in this. So the, the fastest way for me to, to turn that number into a range is to use, um, uh, to use logical operations to, to reduce the range down. Uh, and then just try and use some smart use of kind of comparisons and carry flags and stuff to to ex, ex, to re remove the numbers that I don't want. So I wanted a number from negative one to, uh, to uh, from negative three to positive three, excluding zero. And this has done exactly that. This has given me those, those values. Um, so the only thing I'm going to do very very quickly, uh, just before we, uh, I, I will take a short break for a, for a couple of minutes. Um, but what we'll what we'll try and do very quickly is just change the way that these uh, these things happen. So it's, it's going to be very very kind of temporary this bit. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check this player is dying value. If this player is dying value is is uh, FF. Uh, so we're going to compare it directly to FF. If it's not equal, we're going to skip particles. So we're just going to jump straight to here. Otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to actually do some. Um, we're going to do this loop several times. So are we using? We are using X here. We're using Y here. So I think the easiest way to do this, I'm just going to create a, a little variable at the end here, which I'm just going to call a, a particle counter. Uh, and I'm just going to put a value into this and then I'm just going to decrement it every frame. So here's our particles spawn in here. Uh, so we're going to do it here. I'm going to call this uh, loop. And before we go into it, we're going to take a value. I'm going to do 64. I'm going to store that at particle count. Now, this is not going to draw 64 separate particles. What we're probably going to see is 36 particles at most. And they're going to form in a relatively kind of easy to look at grid so um 
maximum number of particles at the moment it's 64 but i think i can i think i can up that as well so it does some clever stuff where um it's actually drawing the particles into characters that are that are kind of pasted into the screen uh, where they're required on the fly so dynamic kind of um dynamic particle canvas generation i, I guess you'd call it and so instead of the particle canvas being the entire screen the particle canvas is just 16 characters but those characters can be placed wherever they need to be so the canvas could be one um you know uh one grid of characters like a four by four grid or it could be 16 separate characters dotted all over the screen and there are a few different factors that decide how many particles can run on the screen it is a dynamic system it can be changed on the fly or, or it should be changed on the fly um but one of the things it does is if if it runs out of room to draw the particles so if it needs a 17th character it just stops drawing the particles and what it does is it draws it it stops drawing the particles but it remembers where it is in the list that it's drawing and it draws them it carries on on the next frame so it clears the previous one so you get a kind of a flicker effect between the particles that were drawn on the last frame and the particles drawn on the next frame um, but because we're running at 50 uh, frames per second and they're only single pixels it's very hard to spot that um that flicker anyway um, and because they're generally going to be moving quite fast, it doesn't uh, doesn't cause us any problems. But that's also dynamic. It can do that several times, um, and it also has a, a maximum number it will process in a frame, which also um, also does that. Do you keep an individual account of every particle direction? Yes, uh, to keep an account of every particle's position uh, uh, and uh, and velocity. Uh, directional velocity so we're going to decrease particle counter and then if that's not equal to zero we're just going to jump back to the loop uh, which i think was lowercase there we go so this should spawn all of them in one go um, but as i say we're because we're not using fractional values for the for the velocities the velocities are just integers there's just going to be one two or three in in either direction in any of the four directions uh, so that's going to give us six possible uh, six possible velocities on the uh, the y-axis six possible velocities on the x-axis so what we'll see is is a grid of pixels with a tiny hole in the middle where the zero would be um that's uh, six particles one way six particles the other way and it will just kind of expand um there may be some holes missing in it because we're only going to try and draw 64 particles so it's it is going to miss some of them just randomly sometimes but um, it should be pretty much what I say, and then to make that um, to make that work, we just need to add random fractional values, and as well as that, then those particles will move in a um, in a less kind of less kind of methodical, robotic kind of way. They'll be a bit more natural looking. So, so let's, let's get Kilbert. Actually, that didn't look too bad. That actually looked okay, which surprises me. Um, maybe there are still some residue fractional values left over. Oh, I didn't get hit there. Damn it. All right, let me try again. And let me, yeah, I reckon these are, these values are, oh, okay, well, let's put them in then. Let's keep them in and let's get it working fully. Right, I think this is it for tonight. So I'm just going to test this quickly. Uh, and then I'll go for a quick break and then we will, um, uh, we will work on it. Um next time i was thinking you only have a bitmap and a sort of radial point shifting so the the way it works is it, the the position is actually stored as a, a set of a, a multiple sets of values so it actually has the address in memory as one of the values it has the x and y coordinates in character space but it also has the fine value within the character space so you actually have kind of what accounts to six bytes describing the X and Y, your screen location, your X and Y location. The reason you need the X and Y is because you need to know when it's gone out of bounds. Uh, and then you have the fine value within that. That So a character is only eight pixels uh, like res accuracy. So you need to have that kind of fine pixel level accuracy inside. And that kind of helps us speed things up a little bit. Um, and then we just have delta X and delta Y, which allows us to kind of use fixed point maths to kind of move things around. Uh, relatively quickly um it's pretty efficient if if i do um i i did a demo not long ago with 256 particles with physics on them as well where they were bouncing off the walls and stuff uh, and it worked perfectly fine it's just a little bit much for for this game but yeah that looked all right i think that looked like an explosion right uh, 
Um, I mean, it's it's not going to explode. Oh, yeah, it will explode. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, that looks all right. Cool. It's kind of happy with that. Uh, yeah, that, that looks all right. I mean, we could experiment with a few more particles as well. Um, but I think it's I think it's probably okay for now. Don't need to do much more than that. Okay, I'm going to take a quick break. I'm going to be about five minutes. Uh, probably not even that. Actually, two or three minutes. You probably have enough time for for one quiz and one race. Um, and then when I come back, we'll do some Resident Evil. So uh, thank you if you if you're not going to stick around for the Resident Evil. Thank you for joining the stream. And if you are, see you in a few minutes for some PlayStation One zombie fun. All right, be right back. <laughs> 